And now, holy shit, folks. I always remind people, you know I am suspended for life for minor <laughs> hockey. <laughs> it's my duty to please the booty. Did you catch a rattlesnake and then drive home with it in your car holding it the whole time? Yep. Phil only drinks Coke. He doesn't drink water. I fucking quit. Fugazis. Fugazi. Fugazis. Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode 429 of Spit and Chicklets, presented by Pink Whitney. From our friends at New Amsterdam Vodka, here the Barstool Sports Podcast family. What is up, everyone? The Chicklets boys finished their third roadie of the month. We got that Southern Hospitality down in Raleigh. Great time. Trade market starting to heat up, but let's check in with the fellas first. Let's go to... Uh Biz Nasty for us? Yeah, what do you say? What's Fuck, going on, buddy? you sounded like you, you uh, opened up for Hootie and the blow ch- Blowfish Whoa. with that. Hello, everybody. Oh, you sound great for coming off the road. You mentioned a lot of road trips in the last six weeks, but they're all over with. We're ready for this playoff push. Tons of teams in the East in the mix. It's fucking insane. Even more teams than when we talked last time. And a huge trade. But as far as me personally, before we dive into the hockey, it was uh, I went to Teats on Friday, the Pink Whitney event. I actually got out of there before the game. I did not do the tailgate at, um, at what is it, NC State Stadium, the yeah, college stadium. Uh, you, Grinelli, Merles, uh, McQuaid stayed there. It looked unbelievable, but uh, got back, got some rest, and ready to attack another week with chiclets. We got the TNT broadcast. More trade rumors heating up. That's all I got. Throw it over to our boy, G. Producer Mikey Grinelli, what's going on? Uh, I guy down in Raleigh getting everything done. What a weekend. What a weekend in Raleigh. Uh, one of the funnest tailgates I've been a part of, I think, in my entire life. Uh, me and Merle's got some hilarious man-on-the-street content, so I'm sure that'll come out soon, too. We showed up at the perfect time. It was McQuaid's call. Show up in the afternoon, right when everyone's just just that perfect amount of liquored up to get some good content. Uh, but other than that, I'm, I'm ready to talk some rumors with the Rumor Boys. Yeah, we'll get to that in a little bit. Last but not least, the wit dog, Ryan Whitney. What were you up to this weekend, buddy? We missed you down and out. What do you North mean, Carolina. what was he up to? It was his 40th Guys. fucking birthday, baby. Uh, Happy birthday, Whitty. him up. <laughs> Happy birthday, buddy. Thank you buddy. very much, boys. Jesus. 5.19 a.m., February 19th, 1983. And uh, yesterday, as we all know, or Sunday, excuse me, you're listening on Tuesday, was, was my, my 40th birthday. And, um, you know, my wife had asked me, like, oh, what do you want to do for your 40th birthday? I was like, I don't care, nothing. Like, guys, they don't, the guys don't like their birthdays, right? No. They, they no. don't. They don't care. They don't like getting older. But 40 is a special one. I was like, nothing, nothing. She's like, well, maybe we go to Pebble Beach. We could get some people to go to Pebble Beach. I'm like, yeah, I'll do that. But, like, I'm the worst planner ever. And, you know, nothing ended up coming about. But... I'm playing in a a very special, my favorite golf tournament this week, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. It's called the Gasparilla Invitational at Palmasia Country Club in Tampa. I'll go into that maybe at the end of the episode, but we came down to Florida on uh, brief flew down with Wyatt on Tuesday, and I took Ryder down after school on Wednesday. And our plan was, you know, we're staying in Fort Lauderdale where my uh, my in-laws have a place at for two months, staying there. And then on Tuesday, our plan was to drive over to Clearwater where we got like a nice hotel on the beach. It's about 45 minutes from the course. So we'll stay there for a week and head home, you know, before school starts. This is school vacation week and really no plans. I mean, my birthday was Sunday, but you know, my uh, my wife's sister and her husband, very close with Kayla and Steve, their kids are all down. So it's just going to be a fun family hangout for the birthday. And um, so Thursday, the plan was... Uh, kind of confusing with all the names and the people but my in-laws best friends or closest friends ed and kelly they have a place just about a mile away from theirs so we were going to go over ed has a beautiful like 40 foot boston where we're going to go out and then have dinner thursday night first night here and and so i was kind of excited but also she's like we have to go over at three o'clock i'm like why do we have to go over at three o'clock i want to go hit golf balls she's like we just have to go over ed's taking us out on his boat can you just like go over at three o'clock so like I'm like, whatever, this is a fucking joke. My birthday's in three days. Start acting like a girl where their birthday's like a month long. I'm like, <laughs> why do I have to go at three o'clock? <laughs> whatever, I'll go over at three o'clock. So I end up falling asleep in the pool, just like co- completely vacation style. She wakes me up. She's like, hey, we got to get going. All right, whatever. So we walk into Ed and Kelly's. And, you know, I just walked in. They have a beautiful, like, it's like a 70-inch one of those frame tvs where it's like an unreal painting but it's actually the tv when you put it on i'm looking i'm like this tv's sick ed and my father-in-law is standing to the right and he goes well look at the one they have on the wall behind you and i look up and i'm like what's he talking about 
I'm so stupid. Standing right next to me is my mom and dad. So my mom and dad got a place in Estero. And I was like, oh, my God, like, that's awesome. And I hadn't even thought about they would come over. I'm like, this is great. Go out for, the, uh, for a nice boat ride and dinner. My parents are here. This is awesome. Like, give them a big hug. I'm like, this is great. This, this makes it complete, you know. And uh, so we, we grab a drink, whatever. We go outside. Walks around the wall, around the outside. My brother from San Francisco and my other brother who lives in Boston and his wife. I'm like, What? Like, that's when I just lost it, right? Like, I, I almost even got, like, a little emotional because, like, you know, you don't, I never get to see Sean in San Fran. I'm, I miss him. I wished he lived in Boston and just having him fly all the way across. I'm like, are you kidding me? I was like, this is going to be the best night ever now, seeing your brothers. And so give Bree a big hug. I'm like, you're the best. This is unbelievable. So we go to walk on the boat, boys. All of a sudden, 30 people. 15 of my best friends and all their wives jump from the top of the boat. Surprise! No fucking shit. I shit myself. They were like 45, 50 yards away. I said, who is that? Brie goes, all your buddies. I'm like, fuck you. It's all my buddies. What? And everyone, she planned this for about three months. Everyone, like, I swear to God, like, I'm not getting emotional right now. I, I refuse to do it. But I have the closest, best group of friends you could ever imagine. Just truly special people. Um, and to like have all these people be willing to like spend their time, money, and energy to come down here to like celebrate my, my birthday. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Now, mind you, I told them all. I'm like, if I lived in Michigan in February, I wouldn't see you. <laughs> yeah, you come down to Florida to see me, of course. But just the most amazing three-part surprise I've, I've ever experienced. And I will say, I even told Bree, I said like, I kind of thought to my, myself, I was like, ah, it kind of sucks. I'm not doing anything for my 40th birthday. Like, that's all on me because I was like, I don't want to do anything. But then I was like, oh, I'm just going to turn 40 and that's it. Well, I mean, I have the best wife in the world who put in all this energy. She made hats. She made koozies. The boat was sick, staffed with three people. They said they'd never seen that many high noons drank in one setting. And we went out for about <laughs> a three-hour ride. You know, we went out an hour and a half, came back in. It was like 75 and sunny with no wind. And then Ed and Kelly at their house had a huge dinner. Wife, My wife had caterers. So it was just like it was the best three days of my life. No, wow. no doubts about wow. it. And, and part of it was that I, I, think, I think, Biz, you'll know what I'm saying in that a lot of pro hockey players, you, you leave home 15, 16, 17, you go to junior, then you go to college or you go junior, and then you go AHL from Canada, and then you go NHL. And over time, you play in all these different places. And a lot of times we talk about the struggles in retirement, and this isn't the same for anyone at all, but... Not often or not that often do I think guys end up going back and living where they're from. So you end up, you know, retiring. You play for a team for eight years. You retire. You end up, oh, we've, we've built our roots. Our kids were born in the city I played in. All of a sudden, you end up being residents. We talk about all the Blues alumni. They live in St. Louis. Scottsdale has so many people. Well, for me, I always knew I'd move back home. And part of it was that these, these friends who came, these amazing people like – I knew I'd always just go back and, and be one of the boys with my buddies. And it, it honestly made retirement a little easier for me that I just slid right back into my life with all my friends that they'd all been living since we all met when we were 12 years old. So it's like something where you have these lifelong friends. And I think people out there that, that, that have groups of people like that, they know how meaningful they are. All of our kids are the same age. We're just so close. We all live close to each other. And I'm just so grateful for these people in my life and just to have them come down it was amazing and we got on the boat it was funny my wife's like don't because we I, I had had golf lined up for Friday morning um, with two of the guys that were down there I knew they were going to be down there because their in-laws live in Fort Lauderdale as well but I'd been trying to plan with these guys and they were dogging me I'm like hey when do you guys get to Florida they're like I don't know I'm like what are they talking about like do these guys hate me all of a sudden well finally I agreed like to get them to play golf with me Friday morning so uh, in my mind though I'm a sicko I was like I wonder what's up for golf tomorrow and Bree's like don't worry. We lined up 36 holes. You guys are all oh playing 36 God, holes. Oh, my God, dude. Tomorrow. Are you and fucking the girls kidding are me? Out. And she goes, you guys don't even need to come to dinner. Just come to dinner whenever you want. It is just the ultimate, ultimate, like, three-day birthday celebration that I don't deserve. And that I, I'll say again, my wife is the most thoughtful, like, caring person in the I've ever met. Uh, I just, I, I'm, I'm so, you better you know, give her the massage punch card. Entire family. So, 
Hey, was, you better give great. her the massage punch just, card. Was, and I was truly shocked. I didn't have, everyone was like, did you know? I'm like, dude, I didn't have a fucking clue. So well, I, I almost blew it there days. for you, Wit. I almost blew it. We oh, yeah. At, uh, this, is the, this is the funny part. So we're down in Lauderdale for the All-Star game, and I go to Cafe Europa with G, and we're eating. It's me, G, and Merle's. And I look over, and I see a text from Brianna Whitney to G that says, oh. call me when you're not around him. I'm like, what oh, the yeah. fuck is going on Shit here? Scandal. <laughs> I'm like, hey, wow. G. And she's like, uh, uh, uh. I'm like, G, what the <laughs> fuck? I was like, don't put me in this me? spot, man. Don't put me in this spot. I'm like, are you crushing my wife? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I guess that's I should, how I'm so broke up. <laughs> yeah, I know. Hey, imagine that's Yoko how Yoko Ono, Brie. R-A, hey, R.A. and Brie. <laughs> oh, what's gonna hang himself? He keep that up. <laughs> imagine, oh. imagine you I already, walked in I already, like I walked in to Paul Balls Deep. Biz, and watch your fucking mouth I, right I, now, Biz. I'm not picking on Ra's ass, humping I, I already, my old lady. I already oh, cut yeah. him on the Stanley Cup, Biz. I wouldn't do that to him again. That's right, you did. Yeah, you got. You're, 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 you're so done I did. You know, just to wrap it up, I want to thank my friends. Like till the end of time, it made it so memorable. I want to thank Ed and Kelly. I'm at their house right now, recording top notch internet, and um, you know, my family and friends. It's just it was it was very special. And, and I said, for I actually the other thing lady. that popped into my head besides golf tomorrow when I saw the surprise, I was like, all right, I got I got seven years till Bree turns forty. I better fucking make oh, something stop happen. Better and start time. planning the pressure's now. on. Wow, yeah. she's we're gonna go to the moon for fifty. Holy shit! <laughs> I had no, no, I, no. She said she's like nothing else for fifty. She goes forty's the big one. I am on the back nine, wow. so I think that's fair enough. Yeah, oh, I, I don't. Am I in the mid? Not midnight, but I'm. I'm fucking middle aged, dude. I'm. I'm the old man of the podcast. I didn't give a fuck when I turned fifty. I didn't. I didn't want nothing. I wanted to go to Santa Tapio's like I usually do. All I'm right, your your leg. weekend wasn't as good as Wits, but you did no. get to see Hootie and the Blowfish. What was your experience like at at the outdoor game stadium series? I want to get your behind the scene looks uh, looking. Absolutely incredible. First off, I, I got to shout out our buddy Jeff Zucker, who put me in touch with Mark Bryan, who is the lead guitarist for Hootie and the Blowfish. Uh, unbelievable hospitality. He hooked us up with seats for the show and the VIP lanyard. So we had cocktails before the show, cocktails after. And I seen Dan Patrick there. What you know, he was with his wife and his kids, so I, his daughter. I don't want to bother him. And I was like, oh, they must be pals or something. Well. He actually went up to the stage and introed, uh, you know, the the band. Him and Darius Rucker go back 30 years. He's like, I've known these guys for almost 30 years. I met them. I've been friends. We've been through a lot together. You know, kids, divorce, blah, blah, blah. He's like, he goes, and now here's your fucking introduction, Darius in the Blowfish. Like, he didn't call him Hootie. And, dude, they fucking blew the place up. I mean, it was, I think, an 18,000-seat venue, and there weren't, like, any patches of empty seats. I don't know if it completely sold out. It certainly looked like it. Uh, these guys, they don't tour regularly. They never broke up, but they they just do sort of these one-off concerts. And he gave a big shout-out to George Paros during the show. He had a violent gents, violent gents shirt on. He's like, oh, I want to shout-out George Paros. He's the reason why we're here because Paros went to them and said, hey, you know, I, you guys should do a concert while everybody's here in Carolina because, you know, he golfs with all these retired NHL guys. And, dude, the show was unreal, man. I mean, that was like a college soundtrack. He did a couple cover songs. Like, they did Losing My Religion from R.E.M., Champagne Soup and Over from Oasis. Like, I was in my glory, man. The show was, was fucking awesome. Great night. Uh, so, yeah, I, I wish you guys would have made it, but I understand you guys were having fun at, at Teats there. You had Kami there. Colsey was there. P P Shout out Pete Blackburn. Gee, he stopped by to yep. say hello. So, yeah, man, I, I, I had a, uh, an awesome night, man, because there have been no concerts. I've been to, like, two since this COVID bullshit. Uh, so concerts, man, they're like soul cleansing sometimes, bitch. You just, like, you just feel good after, man. You just, like, you know, fucking bust the move, get out, you know, dance, do whatever, rock out, sweat your ass off. But, yeah, Hootie and the Blowfish it, fucking blew the place out. It, it truly takes your, your, your brain and puts you in, like, in the present, right? Uh, sometimes, absolutely. you know, you get thinking about the past or the present or whatever it may be. Um, uh, going back to Teats, though, that's Bates Battaglia, B Bates Battaglia's bar. We've had him on the podcast before. I think when we had him on, he wasn't really sure like what we were doing here at Spitting Chicklets. Uh, he was letting it fly pretty good, though, uh, going after Bruce, <laughs> Bruce Cassidy. Uh, the bar itself, very, very cool setup. I want to thank the entire Gallo crew in the Carolinas who help, uh, help us push the product. Uh, the showing was incredible. You talk about the Southern hospitality. I did not expect that many people to show up, especially with Witt celebrating his 40th birthday and the guy whose name's on the bottle. 
It oh, was yeah. fucking rammed. Everybody was so wow. so kind and patient. They, everybody waited uh, uh, patiently for pictures. Obviously, we were handing out Pink Whitney like crazy. So I guess just overall, thank you to the brand and the fans because you know Pink Whitney in New Amsterdam and Gallo is the reason why we get to hop around to these marquee events. And they put us up in hotels and pay for travel. So uh, thank you to all the sales team all across North America that helped us out. Uh, and uh, it, it, was, it was an awesome event. So thank you so much. And uh, shout out to Pink Whitney, Mr. Whitney. Before we go any further, I need to talk about our presenting sponsor, Pink Whitney Vodka from New Amsterdam Vodka. Just, just an absolute treat to be down in Florida. It was flowing on the boat we had for my 40th birthday surprise party. It was flowing at Teats for the pregame party down in Carolina before the big tilt between the Capitals and the Hurricanes. It'll be flowing on the golf course when I'm playing in the Gasparilla, beautiful Palmasia this week. It's the perfect drink to have with your buddies. It's the perfect drink to have with your family, and it's the perfect drink when you're looking to just relax and watch a little hockey. So please, everyone, go out, try a nip, get a bottle, put it on some ice, throw in some soda water, do it as a shot. Whatever way you want to drink it, just have a good time enjoying Pink Whitney, enjoying New Amsterdam Vodka, and thank you so much for being a loyal supporter of not only our pod, but our favorite vodka ever, Pink Whitney and New Amsterdam. I mean, we haven't even gotten to the game yet either. Uh, Like I said, Raleigh, unbelievable host. The outdoor game was sick. They had the uh, NC State band there, the mascots, the cheerleaders, and I mean, they just fucking spanked them. They got a 4 nothing lead. The Caps got one goal late. Tommy Wilson ruined the shutout bid, but... I mean, Carolina just dominated. The uh, atmosphere G in the stadium was great. It was actually kind of cold in there. I didn't pack a jacket. I only had my hoodie. I froze my balls off. But The food well in the it. stadium, though, was incredible. Like 10 out no of 10 shit. Carolina barbecue. It was so good. I love food at the tailgate, too. Everyone was like, uh, people were getting there like 48 hours beforehand so they could get their like, uh, brisket cooking and all their barbecue cooking because it. <laughs> getting it smoked because it takes a while and man just walking around that tailgate people are like oh eat try my burnt ends try my ribs try my brisket the food was like 10 out of 10 some of the best i've ever had burnt yeah, ends you- are just oh, top so, notch and so good what i liked about the atmosphere in the game was all the student section in the band behind the yeah. one of the goals i think it was like that's a pretty cool kind of addition in terms of having a college football stadium but it looked great i mean it was just carolina's i i hammered them in regulation that was an easy win obviously everyone knows my detroit bet or my edmonton bet over detroit really backfired uh this week but it just looked like a good game and it was pretty typical in the fact that carolina they just smothered them they were just all over them. them i i think that was one of those games where you're like this martin neck neckess neckess how you say his last name is c- kind of certain nights on a different level where I don't think he's completely popped off yet to like maybe like a superstar but you see these glimpses and obviously he's had a great year but that game he was the best player on the ice by a mile just going online RA and seeing those uh, when they came in the entries and with the band that you said and the, the guys walking out and they had the fireworks going on the ice that gave me a hockey boner that was just well put on right there yeah I know we were probably too crazy about the black and red jerseys when they come out but it did look dynamic the other night the way they come out like that also too did you see where they got off the bus they had the uh the golf uniforms on. i'm sure you like that wit did you know that was a tribute to Payne stewart wit i i didn't know that till after the game and he he won uh the u.s open at piners then tragically passed away and um i i gotta be honest though i I do like the walkout outfits, but it's kind of maybe jump the shark at this point. I don't know if I'm being just kind of grumpy 40-year-old guy. I am 40 now. I'm a man. I'm 40. But I like the golf one maybe because I'm a golf junk box, but I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. maybe How much I'm, do you think I'm, the guys are being forced into it? Because I'm sure not every guy on the team wants to show up dressed up in a costume. Do you remember I, Pasternak when he had to wear the baseball uniform? <laughs> Was he He's not disgusted. happy about that? <laughs> oh, really? Like, what the fuck? He wasn't happy. I don't, I don't I mean, think he, lo- he was too thrilled. He, he, he loved the 80s Titan Bright. He was rocking that one big time. Um, I didn't yeah, know that's it was how a dresses Stewart. regularly. <laughs> I didn't know it was a, 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 a Payne Stewart. What would you say? A, a tribute. Tribute to Payne Stewart. A, a, a yeah. tribute to him. So now that knowing that, it, it obviously makes it a lot better. But I would agree with you, Wit. 
Are, are we going to start a, a Whitney Grind My Gear segment now that you've hit the wow, big 4 yeah. or what? The new grumpy No, guy because the, the podcast would be seven hours and 15 minutes every week and five <laughs> hours and 47 minutes of it would be Actually, we haven't complained about gears. a flight yet. We should probably get that in for 15 minutes here. Who had a shitty flight to, on the way home? Seamless coming home. I, I was, was at middle okay. row, back, I, back middle row, middle seat. It was the worst. No, we're, I was kidding. We're not fucking talking I, no, about any more flights. <laughs> Quickest boarding ever. Uh, also, they they brought the sto- uh, storm surge back, the one that you know Rod Brindamore actually brought to the team as he uh, disclosed on the show a while back, and they kept the golf team going. They threw the the gloves down and like kind of fake golf. But at first, I I was like, oh, they are they shitting on the fucking uh, Capitals, telling them it's golf in season. But then I realized they I didn't see the outfits until after the game, and I realized, oh, okay, it was part of the, the whole golf team. And no, the Capitals, rumor boys, they were doing that. They were taunting them. <laughs> fuck you, fuck you, Caps. Washington, I think, is done. I think they're done. I don't think they're getting in. Now we know what happens. They they win eight in a row after I say something like this, but. <laughs> There's not much cooking there right now. Biz, I want, I want to know what you thought of the uh, Varsity Blues theme that they went with. Come off the school bus with the, the uh, leather, no, leather I Varsity think, I think it was going. safe. I yeah. think the right word is it was very safe. The Bombers looked unbelievable. Uh, jerseys, same idea with the Canes ones you said, R.A. At first, I was like, eh. But when, you're, when they're on the ice and they're big like that, I, ju- I like the presence of them. And then Nashville had the same thing when the, the, the Nashville was rotten and big and then they had the guitar pick in the middle. So I like the theme of making them very big so you can see them from far distance. And they pop nice when they're on the ice. So I think, I think before we judge these jerseys, we have to see them in the full outfit with the gloves, helmet, and, and how it all plays itself out. I know you uh, see a the picture dog of a jersey off? online. It doesn't do it justice in terms of the guys actually in full uniform wearing it out on the ice. It it's totally different than mm-hmm. the pictures that first get released. What, uh, what did you see the dog face off? He's like a local legend fan dog. He come out with with the puck and, and dropped it and. I think it was it was a stall and um, I don't know if it was back. They sh- they shook the guy's hand, then they shook the dog's hand. Like hey, give me a bar after he dropped the puck. <laughs> Pretty funny little clip. Uh, also, fifty six thousand nine hundred and sixty one people, uh, largest crowd in franchise history. Uh, me and G was saying the only thing I, I think the NHL could maybe work on with whatever the next stadium series venue is is uh, post game transportation because there's nothing around there. It's a college campus. There's no bars or restaurants to kind of chill out afterwards, and there's no signage. It's, it could be confusing, especially if you had a few pink Whitney's or, or big deal brews getting out of there and finding your, your ride sharing. But I think other than that, the NHL really hit a home run here. I mean, that's yep. maybe one my, one minor quibble, but otherwise we had a ball shout out to Raleigh. Like G said, the folks there, unbelievable hospitality, generosity. You can walk up to any table, pull food off it. Nobody says anything to you. They're actually honored. They eat their food, drinking their moonshine. So Raleigh, we tip our uh, caps to you. See, we're not biased. We don't like the TV timeouts, but Kim Jong Bettman did a great job with the league by throwing on another marquee event. Uh, absolutely. The next one, Seattle hosts Vegas, and then there will only be three teams after that game that have yet to play an outdoor game, Arizona, uh, Columbus, and Florida. So, I don't know Okay, so I'm hearing a rumor Uh-oh. that Ooh, in the near future they want to do one between Tampa and Florida and do it in Tampa Bay, which I don't know. That's like the humidity over, even in the winter time, you just can't, like we were there filming that commercial. We were there for all-star. Like at what time of the year are you going to do this? Because even if at nighttime wit, there's no way the ice is going to survive. You're going to have a Lake Tahoe all over again. Yeah. That's, that's like, you can get it done and you have the coolers under the ice, but forget even like a really hot day when the game actually comes. Like there's monsoons here. Like it just starts pouring rain randomly. Remember the, remember the, Last day we were at All-Star break. I mean, like, it's going to be kind of hard for them to ever pull that off. I mean, I guess at some point they'll have to try it. It just makes, I mean, those three teams, poor Columbus. I mean, (laughs) they're the ones that are actually in cold weather. They still can't get one. You three can vouch for me. Arizona at ASU Stadium against the Vegas Golden Knights. It gets so cold here in the wintertime at night. There's no humidity. It's the perfect temperature and outdoor experience. Yes or no? Yes. Thousand yes. percent. You'll have Bedard to play in it too. So yes. Oh yeah. Not yeah, if they yeah. keep fucking playing the Dude, way they are. Do I'm five zero and in the four in their last nine. I'm. I, I'm five putting myself oh in the four. lineup. What are you guys yep. doing? Stop it, buddy. Don't look Stop. at me. Don't look at me. Put you yeah, back in the lineup. Then. Da- I'd be putting David Ayers in net. I'd be putting me on the fucking back end, snapping them taped to boards or over the glass. <laughs> Arizona versus Columbus. When it gets uh, Bedard, biz. How about that? <laughs> 
Yeah, uh, yeah, the Flint, Michigan Mega Bowl. Uh, uh, Alexander Ovechkin, he, he did miss the game. His uh, his dad passed away, so we want to extend our sympathies to Alex uh, and his family on the loss of his dad, McHale. Uh, he was a very popular figure on the team. Every time he came around, all the players loved him. He was a big fan of the team. Obviously, his son played for him, so uh, we're sorry about your loss, Alex, and again, we extend our sympathies. And I thought uh, the CBC up in Canada, biz, they ran it like a, just a sh- like a shitty timed hit piece on, on, on Ovechkin. I thought it was just like a total lack of class. The headline, what to do about a problem called Alex Ovechkin, a closer look at the NHL's close ties Body. to Putin. I mean, the guy's on fucking personal leave. His dad died. You could have done this a month ago, a week ago, next week. You do it when he's on leave. I just thought it was a fucking shit move. And it was a classic like reporter, like, all right, let me get some two people who agree with my my thing, and then I'll amplify it that and say, oh, some people are saying. It was just like- is extremely liberal to the point where it's like you you can't tell me that you're better people when taking that opportunity during that period of time to run that. It's like you're not a you're not a good person. You're exactly. not. Exactly. Yeah. In fact, exactly. you're the opposite. And anybody I mean, with half a brain can see right through that bullshit. And it's becoming more and more obnoxious to where I think more people are kind of. I think I think there's way more normal people who understand that far one way and far the other way are ridiculous let's be gone with all of them and just fucking live a normal life with the with the the who 90%. wrote that piece all right what was the what was the um, the, the, the i i didn't even write his name down because i didn't know not the name what was, the, what was it from um, i didn't hear CBC, what uh where it came cbc. from cbc.com just the, oh you know, cbc um it yeah, was by CBC. Terrence McKenna from CBC. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, like I said, there was nothing new in there. It was, you know, I know uh, the, the guy Slava Mal- Malamud, I think you pronounce his name. He's, you know, he hates uh, Ovechkin in Russia. And uh, that's fine. He has a stance. But the guy just kind of took all his points. And then, you know, uh, Hashik, who's been very outspoken. Those are the only two things people he got. He didn't even get them. They've been saying the same thing. So I mean, yeah, Hashik was, was going at Ovechkin's kid at the fucking All-Star game because he was doing breakaways. It's like, yeah. buddy, take a knee here. Like yeah. his kid was his kid was born in America. Like give it give it a rest, man. Yeah, exactly. It's just, you know, there's time and a place, man, and it was just fucking, I don't know, bullshit that they did at them. But anyways, we can move along. Start talking about the fun stuff. Start talking about the hockey. We do have two guests today. We're going to get to a little later. Uh, Vegas Golden Knight All-Star Chandler Stevenson. He stopped by when we were down at Fort Lauderdale for a chat. And our buddy Colby Armstrong visits for a little chat about the Pee Wee tournament. The Pee Wee tournament up in Quebec. Sounded like a good time. But first, Biz, your Leafs swinging for the wow. fences. They loaded up for their next playoff adventure. They got Ryan O'Reilly and uh, Noah Chari from the Blues in a three-team deal that also included the Minnesota Wild. The Blues got back forwards Adam Gadette and Mikhail Abramoff. Toronto's first in 23, Toronto's second in 24, and Ottawa's third in 23. Uh, the Blues will retain half of his $7.5 billion salary, and Minnie's going to eat a quarter of that as well. They sent uh, prospect John Palat to Toronto for Toronto's fourth and 25. I'm not sure what Minnie's doing here. I don't know if it was a favor or whatever. Uh, and then Achari's $1.25 million. O'Reilly, 32-year-old pending UFA. Won the cup, obviously, in 19, Conn Smythe, Selkie. They think, well, they pencil him in third after Matthews and Tavares in the center. We'll see what happens there. But, Biz, you're the Leafs fan. What's your uh, reaction to this huge trade? Kyle fucking Dubas, man. (laughs) What a move. His back was against the wall this year. He had to pull a rabbit out of his ass, and he did an incredible job. And let's go back to who got the party started with Lou Lamarillo. Everyone thought, oh, he got Horvat. He started the party off early. And then Drury says, hey, buddy, there ain't enough fucking Cialis on the planet to get you guys up for a playoff run like this New York Rangers team. And then they go out and get fucking Tarasenko. And uh, I, Mikola, Mikola. Mikola. <laughs> and listen, we knew that that was going to put the pressure on Toronto to do something in Dubas' last year of his contract. I'd give him a fucking extension for making this move. It completely makes up. For the fact that he got rid of Kadri, that was probably the worst trade of his tenure with the Toronto Maple Leafs. But to go in and and you talked about it last podcast, I was talking about praying for Kane. Well, they end up going and they solidify that bottom six by not only getting Ryan O'Reilly. And he, it seems like these lines are going to be put in a bit of a blender to maybe decide if he's going to end up on the wing or if he's going to end up third line center. Not really sure how it's going to play out. But if... 
everybody's like, oh, he's got 12 goals this year and he's regressing offensively. I, I, I think we have been adamant about saying that Ryan O'Reilly has, has lost a bit of a step, but penciled in as a third-line center, he will ble- beat you with his mind, his skill set, and, and all the other intangibles that you need to bring to a championship lineup. So I like him penciled in. You got fucking Matthews, you got Tavares, and then you got Ryan O'Reilly. To me, that's the most depth up the middle in the entire Eastern Conference. Argue me, argue with me if you guys want to argue with me, but that is a deadly, deadly middle of the ice. Then on t- the cherry on top, Achari. Maybe one thing that the Leafs were lacking in the bottom six was that physical approach where Giordano said it best. He goes, everybody's raving about the O'Reilly aspect, but this Achari is a pain in the ass to play against. He's a a built like a cigarette. Sandpaper. He's built like a cigarette machine. He's five <laughs> ten, two ten, uh, maybe two fifteen, depending on how much fucking pasta his his uh, his parents fed him before pregame. And he finishes every single hit. So just talk about forward wise. And I don't think that Dubis is done. But overall, on that trade. A plus, it sends a message to those guys in the locker room. We got a championship pedigree in here now. We got more added to the bottom six. And heck, heck, I I, I think at this point, O'Reilly is probably a, a 15 to 17 minute guy at, at center ice, maybe because of the, the, the less amount of skating that you play up and down the wing. Maybe he's playing top two lines and he's getting closer to that 20. But overall, don't care what they gave up in order to, to get him. It's going to be a late first rounder anyway. A fucking plus to a guy who put Toronto back on the map and back in contention for that Stanley Cup this year. Do you think that it was too high of a price for the Leafs to pay? Not at all. And, okay. and I think the, the main reason being that Dubas knows all these draft, draft picks he's given away, he, doesn't even, he won't even be there to see these draft picks if they don't end up making a run. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. I, I, he, he, I think he made it pretty clear in that he didn't want to give away draft picks. It's something that's hard for him to do. But more than anything, he didn't want to get rid of any roster players, which makes a lot of sense. I mean, it's the last year of your deal. If you don't get out of the first round, you're done. So I really don't, I, I don't have the time or energy to worry about these draft picks. I just got to get guys in now that are going to help this team. I'm seeing uh, line rumblings of Tavares actually on left wing and O'Reilly sec- centering the second line. Like Biz said, I think it's a complete blender mashup until you figure out what works. But for them to maybe go on a true cup run, I would think O'Reilly would be your third line center. Achari, just exactly what Biz said, just a bulldog motherfucker to play against exactly what yeah. they needed. And more than anything, when you talk about the, the chirping of O'Reilly, who yeah, maybe he has lost a step and his production's way down this year. For any player, and even more so for a guy with the, the pedigree and the resume of, of Ryan O'Reilly, to get to a different team that has had success for the past few years, it just it gets this side of you going that necessarily wasn't there with St. Louis and their struggles this year. So yeah, his numbers there aren't great, but just like the mental aspect of joining a contender and being in the race, it, it can up a player's, not only their value, but their overall play just on the mental aspect of it. Like I'm back in the middle of it. And, and this is a guy who was not ever approaching St. Louis games like they didn't mean the world to him. But when you continue to lose and it's been that much of a struggle this season, it's just a lift to your spirits to go to a place. And not only oh, is it yeah. is it a contender, it's Toronto. It's the guy's hometown team, right? So it's like something where, and I don't know if he's exactly from Toronto, but it's just the fact Close that you're playing in like, you're playing in this mega market, like, and you're playing in front of these rabid fans who just need success. And and I would be absolutely shocked if his level of play doesn't go up being on this team oh, because yeah. there's still a lot of good hockey in him. And I think now you're going to see it in Toronto. So Achari already got his first goal too. So you see that he can he can I mean he could score if he's given the chance. He'll he probably score a couple year. big goals. Yeah, exactly. So this is a guy that both of those guys are just exactly what the Leafs needed. So coming from an all-time Leaf hater in myself, who ironically enough loves watching the team play, but just hopes they lose every game. I gotta be. I gotta. I gotta be honest with you guys. If I'm ta- if I'm Tampa Bay, I'm sitting around like, oh fuck, because we got Tampa, Toronto, and we got Rangers, Devils in the first round. Those are pretty much locked in. And the fact that Tampa's looking at this team that they barely snuck by last year, adding a Conn Smythe winner and then a dirt dog to the bottom six in in Chari, 
That's a hell of a deal by Kyle Dubas. And like I mentioned uh, before, dog. those draft picks, he, meant, he may never even be around when they end up getting picked. Uh, I like that. Dirt dog? You just come up with that on the spot? Wet dog? Nah, that was a Red Sox term. Yeah. Oh, is it? Did you see, hey, Nixon, right, did you guys, did you guys see O'Reilly stroll in first game? Why do you think I wore this fucking jacket? Do you see him walking in with that? the jean jacket with the Sherpa? You don't think, hey, I'm going to take a page out of your book. Wait, you don't think Lisa from Lindsay, Ontario was fucking jamming herself with the BBC <laughs> special? Seeing him on the Leafs Instagram walking in with a, a jean jacket and a toque on? Huh? He's got hey, the you designer know, one. You got the one from think, Macy's, you don't think, though. You don't think Carl from Coburg was listening to talk radio the next morning after that trade, <laughs> cranking his cock off before he got his 99 Tim Hortons roll up the rim to win special? Come on. <laughs> huh? He's well, probably going to be a little more careful. This, I, I have to throw a little, a little shade. I mean, they lost to Columbus and Chicago this week, so let's let's hold the horses here, correct? Well, okay, so that raises another question, and I'll throw it around to you guys. What else has to be done? In my opinion, they got to go and find one more defense, and I think yep. they need a little bit insurance in net. I'm not saying fucking, you know, they, I'm not trying to go get Vemelka or, or or the next big guy. I mean, maybe David Ayers, R.A. Is he the guy? You think he's the guy? <laughs> a lot Is of he the third string? Out, yeah. yeah, I mean, the trade obviously huge, but my first thing was like, well, it, it doesn't improve, the, improve their defense. I mean, they still have the same D. Not that it's a, uh, an Achilles heel for them right now, but I think it could use some improvement. Uh, but I think O'Reilly, he's going to start checking the labels on those bottles. Did you see that clip? He was in warm-ups. He went over, grabbed the bottle. He put it over his head. It was all bio-steel. He put all fucking no. bio-steel on his head. Yeah, he, he just got there to know it wasn't water. <laughs> Fucking uh, dump the stuff all over him. And also, uh, you got to give Sheldon Keefe a little shout out. Uh, Sheldon Keefe, he, he started him uh, the first game, so the crowd gave him a nice applause. I thought that was a pretty cool gesture he did, so he can get him right out there and, and you know have the crowd give him a little acknowledgement. So, yeah, man, they, they still need some D. I mean, Samsonov's been pretty damn good in net for them. Uh, we'll see what happens come playoff time. I mean, it's the Leafs, it's the playoffs, so it's, it's always going to be an adventure. I always use this example, and I don't mean to get carried away because I know it's <laughs> Sidney Crosby and it's Evgeny Malkin. But that one cup run where their best defenseman was Dumoulin, Tanger yep. ended up getting hurt. If you have a strong enough middle of the ice, and the way that Toronto plays defense now is they play as a five-man unit. It's not all scrambly like it once was. And you also have the defensive commitment from those top-end guys. I've already mentioned it 20 times already. Matthews blocking all the shots. The defensive game overall from the team standpoint has improved. I don't think that they go, need to go out and make a huge splash on the back end. I'm looking at a guy like maybe – like a, like I think that they lost a lot of physicality on the back end when they lost Labushkin. I thought that he went in and did a tremendous job of just separating the man from the puck. Simple game. Maybe a guy like Luke Shen. I'm drawing a blank to the, the defenseman's name in Columbus who, who keeps coming up. Gavrikov. And there's ties right now to, to him potentially going to – was it the Rangers? Boston's been a team mentioned. Boston, excuse yeah. me. It was Boston. I see fucking Doobie maybe sneaking in there and cock blocking that. And here's another here's another crazy one for you, and you guys are going to think I'm full of shit, all you people listening. I talked to an extremely reliable source, and we're going to get to more in Patrick Kane. I heard the reason that Kaner was so upset is he was one foot in the door in New York. The trade was a base. The trade was basically do done when Doug Armstrong came in last minute and cock blocked it, and then got it done with Tarasenko and Mikola. So that's why Kaner has been so irritated and maybe a little bit more vocal than we're used to hearing Patrick Kane be, and and why he might have looked a little lifeless. Um, the, the couple games after that that trade had gone through just how, of how maybe dejected he was of thinking he was literally on his way to New York and then boom yeah well, well, we, we can no we booty. Can put the lifelessness we could put the lifelessness aside because now he's got five goals in his last two games including the hat trick against Toronto and what was interesting was his quotes after where they asked him about the the the, the chance or maybe the rumors about going to Toronto he's like that was never even really discussed. Like, and he kind of made a point. He's like, not everything you hear is true. Now, there's some very reliable sources out there, but even those guys end up getting false information. And, and maybe he's taking a shot at the rumor boys, us four yeah. who just sitting around making stuff up. Like, and I said, oh, he's he taking going shots at me before. He called me a clown at the beginning of the year this year when we were, I was doing the first broadcast with the Stanley Cup champions or the reigning cup champions, Colorado Avalanche. He kind of subtly threw it under his breath. I think that was a shot at us. I think our prayer was heard worldwide. Is he anti-prayer biz? 
<laughs> so, which leads me to my next point. I think that Patrick Kane hates God. That's 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 ultimately the point I was trying to make. He's anti-Christ, and I don't know where he's going. Probably Dallas, where there's no state tax. As weeks he I mentioned Dallas and Vegas is two possible landing spots for him. Weeks he's wide and pretty good. He didn't say they were the only two, and you know, like we just saw with the Tarasenko deal and uh, probably a few other deals that their uh, salary tension. You have a, another team come in, give him a draft pick, you know, to eat some of that salary. I mean, Chicago could certainly afford it, but I would think we'll see that there because he's you know a ten million dollar salary. Uh, also, what else do I have here? Uh, well, I just want to say yeah. I, I want to personally see a Patrick Kane spite tour. I, I I don't know what's going on with the hip. I know that he's been a little bit more vocal. That game against Toronto, the hat trick, you don't think that was a message? The second to, goal to, was to, sick. It was fucking nasty. The patience he had, he looked like the Patrick Kane of old. Now, we also have to pump his tires in RA. I don't know if you've already mentioned it. He recorded his uh, 1,216th and 1,217th career point over the last couple games, passing Jeremy Roenick for the third most among U.S.-born players in National Hockey League history. The list goes at the top, Mike Madano, below him, Phil Housley, and now we have Patrick Kane, of course. So a big milestone. I think that he's going to go down as the best American-born player ever. I think that he still has gas left in the tank, and for a team who's desperately in need of some goal scoring, I think Dallas makes the most sense right now. And I would love so to see I. them go make a big splash because I think that like all, all the headlines are going to the East. It's a dog fight in the East. Who's going to poke their head above water in the West? I think there's a couple teams that are front runners, obviously with Colorado getting healthy. I think that Edmonton has a strong chance. Dallas with the goaltending they have and the back end they have to have, they have to show that group inside the locker room. And it goes back to what you said last week too, G. Sagan and Kane have a little bit of history. Also, uh, Emily Kaplan from ESPN reported the Blackhawks will not be trading Captain uh, Jonathan Taves due to the uncertainty about his health. Uh, he hasn't played since January 28th, was placed on IR February 15th. Uh, in a statement released by the team on Sunday, Tave said he's been dealing with symptoms of long COVID and chronic immune response syndrome. Uh, we obviously wish him the best and good health, but I'll tell you, man, these immune immunity issues or immune issues they're a motherfucker man some doctors misdiagnose them they can't figure out what they are and then he's been suffering with a lot of this stuff you just get like these weird maladies and, and symptoms that like doctors get mystified by so uh he's been dealing with that quite a bit so obviously like i said we, we wish him well uh biz i want to just go back to the other trade uh uh the what do you call it the blues trade uh the blues dump tarasenko and o'reilly two huge parts of that cup run they got back two first rounders a second two thirds two prospects they have three first rounders this summer what went wrong with the Blues this year, Biz, and what do they need to do to fix this? Okay, so I don't know, and Biz, we'll, we'll snap talk, it around before I get to yeah. that. I was just going to compliment Biz, Doug Armstrong and the way that he made – go ahead, go ahead, sorry. I'll shut the fuck up. I was up. actually ahead, just Lee. wondering, how many guys are left on that team who won the Cup now? There's got to be Schenner. like, what, six or seven guys there? Barbashev. Right. I don't know the Bennington. number, so I shouldn't have put you guys on the spot, but it, it, it happens quick, right? And I think you were about to say, you got to give credit to Doug Armstrong when he realizes what's going on, he's quick to act. Is that what you're, that's what you're going to mention? Buddy, massive, massive tire pump to unload the way he did and get everything back where it's boom. You make the decision, doesn't look like it's going to be our year. Unload, get ahead of it before the actual deadline. Like, Let's call a spade a spade here. If we're going to talk Chicago, too, with the Patrick Kane stuff, what is what are they going to get in return for him? I think that Davidson at this point has completely overplayed his hand and could leave that organization in a very difficult spot where you thought you had two birds in the bush, and all of a sudden it's like, you, you what do you mean? Or isn't that the no, term, two birds in a bush? Uh, uh, it was uh, a bird in the hand. Oh, wait. A bird in the hand is worth... Oh, uh, sounds yeah, right. I probably Keep fucked going, it up. <laughs> <laughs> I probably fucked it up. But anyway, the complete opposite where he acted right away. I, I mentioned the fact that, that he potentially cock-blocked that trade, at least what I'm hearing from a reliable uh, source. But to get the return in which he has, where they still do have some good assets, where they could fucking rebuild quick around Thomas and uh, in Cairo... I think just applause all around, man. This is a guy who's been around a while. He finally got a Stanley Cup. There's a reason he's involved with Hockey Canada. Just a, a, a genius move to make that quick decision, which I think I said a month ago or six weeks ago, I said they got to fucking blow it up. And uh, Barbashev is also linked to be going out pretty soon as well. A guy who's uh, an, an Achari type. 
just a big I know, heavy I was guy. Say that, but even a little better. You know, a little more right. offense to his game, maybe. But but a tank. Correct. A tank. So, uh, yeah, a- applause all around. Now, what what were what were you asking before that about uh, what went wrong? Um, I don't. <laughs> I I think that when they got rid of Petro, things started going a little bit downhill. And this is no knock on Perenko's game because I think when they ended up having uh, – when Al McInnes was there helping the guys out, I believe it was Al McInnes, he was you know hel- helping these guys out find their game and maybe you know, be, being that uh, that ear to listen to and, and, and Josh back and forth where I don't think that Perenko was, was set up to take on that number one role. And I know they try to do it by committee by getting Krug and Falk in there, but I, I just really sensed a, a shift ever a, after that where things were never the same. That's a hard decision to make as a general manager. Do I give this stud defenseman who's our captain and pay him nine and a half a year to stick around? Or do I, you know, maybe go in a different direction? Um, you know, clearly they had O'Reilly get in the C after he moved on and some other plans up front. But, um, you know, overall, just uh, I thought that the, the, the back end and the goaltending had really let them down over the last couple of years. I mean, you can I, I say what you want good, about who's good way so, to look but, at it. I think it's a good way to look at it. I think that. A guy like David Perron, that's a guy who was a big part of that team. You've seen how important he's been to Detroit. All of a sudden, he wasn't around anymore. Then you look at the Pareko situation where maybe they kind of thought he was a little better than he, than, he, than he turned out to be. Maybe they thought there was still from some room for him to grow into the kind of Petro type number one where he really hasn't. And then the goaltending has just been so inconsistent. I mean, even this year, you've seen these runs – that that they that they've had by Bennington and then all of a sudden he disappears. So it's a bunch of different factors and a lot of it just kind of shows inconsistency, which is the main reason they're at where they're at, right? They they just could never get the ball rolling. They'd win three, lose three. And it's been that way for a little bit. Ironically enough, they gave Colorado the best friggin' look anyone gave them last year. And it's like if they beat Colorado last year, which was a four two series, who knows? Maybe they win it again, but um it's a it's a crazy business and things change fast and all of a sudden Tarasenko when he didn't get the C he was pouty boy for the past couple seasons so a bunch of different issues that that turn into one clusterfuck for for the for a a team that also has never really like rebuilt like in the la- you know what I mean like when when have the Blues been real bad I feel like no it seemed like they shifted thirty during years the, yeah they shifted during the Bacchus T J Oshie era but they never really went away. They did no. more retooled. No. They, yeah, retooled yeah. would be the term I'm looking for. I know we moved on past the Leafs. We didn't talk about the chain gang. Honorary, no. new honorary member. So I guess the question is, is when they win it, am I getting a ring? That's the, ne- that's the next big one. So shout out to Austin Matthews on the TNT broadcast, making me part of the chain gang. How, how do you do, fellow kids? <laughs> You think I'm too old? I'm not, I, I, I feel like I say this every year, but, but like now this year, if they lose in the first round again, I am going to be the most insufferable human being alive the first episode after they lose. Like I, I just more? can't even – I don't even – like if I was happy during my birthday surprise <laughs> celebration, I can't even imagine my, my just glee if they somehow lose the first round again this year. It will be fucking fantastic. Yeah, and <laughs> amplify that by 10 if they do, in fact, make it past the first round, and then by 20 if they make it past the second round, and then if they end up going all the way, boys, we're going to be officially a Leafs podcast. We won't even know what the Boston Bruins are by the time I'm done with you guys. <laughs> I'll be in fucking Spotify then. Uh, Biz, were you, a, were you a big puka shell guy back in the day? I, I, I could see you wearing that. The, the puka, puka shell thing. necklaces? Yeah. Uh, I don't think I ever did the puka shell. I might've okay. had, I, I had a couple hemp ones in my day, surprisingly <laughs> RA. Um, but no, but should, you think I should go seashell for the other chain? I think they're pretty cool look. And the dudes still wear gold chains. I, I know they were big way back in the day when I was um, younger. The guys still wear like gold chains. Oh yeah. Not, not just oh, Italians yeah. like anybody. Yeah. I'm going to be wearing a choke collar. <laughs> I'm gonna go full. I'm gonna go full bondage for this run, boys. We're going. Off, we're going off the rails. Bring out the gimp. <laughs> He's sleeping. Well, I guess we're gonna have to wake him up now, won't we? <laughs> Biz, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. 
That's the phrase. Yeah, two in the bush. Two in the bush. Uh, the Avs and Wild, they were the second game that night. Uh, Billy Guerin, not sure whether the Wild will be buyers or sellers. I don't think that trade the other day really indicated much. Like I said, it was almost like a favor. They took on a little bit of the salary, gave up a prospect just for a fourth rounder. Uh, but what, well, they what like you bought what, a draft pick, basically. Yeah, and they, uh, you know, but the like prospect was a fourth. spent yeah. money to get a draft pick. Right, and they lost a, a prospect as well. They kind of swapped him out for the pick. But what do you think? Many does anything? I mean, they don't have a ton of money. They've been struggling recent. They're barely holding on to that last wild card spot right now. I I don't, and and I think that unfortunately for Billy Garen, he went in and he had to make that tough decision uh, with the Parisi Suter buyouts, and and it's just one of those things like. This year and the next two after, they're kind of just floating, you know. And if you get in the playoffs, that's a great thing. They just don't have the ability and the cap space until that entire buyout ends to do much. So it's a it's a good team that, that could add if this whole thing hadn't gone down the way it had. But right now, they're just stuck in, in between a rock and a hard place where they hope they get in. But deep down, I'm sure Billy G knows they don't have the team to make a run for a Stanley Cup. Ironically enough, I've said ironic 15 times this podcast. If I say it again, that's okay. I I use crutch words, don't you think? Gustafson is playing great, and Flurry's been kind of struggling. So it's like, are they going to ride Gustafson now, who's never really been a starter? So there's a bunch of different things going on. The one thing is, you still just get to watch Kaprizov every game if you're a Wild oh. fan. This fucking guy is so fun to watch, and they have him locked in. So I think you're more looking for Mini in two or three years to try to really start building something special because there's not much they can do. Right. Yeah, they got uh, uh, Boldy. They got that Rossi kid. Now, R.A., if I'm not mistaken, did those buyouts not kick in this year where they have $10 million going against the cap? Or, 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 no, are I think this is they- the year it kicks in. It, kicked, it wasn't kicked in last year, even though they bought him out last year. Okay, I think the big right, penalty okay. was this year and the next two. They got three years? I thought it was just this year and next year. Jesus Christ, that's uh, a big pee-pee whack for look. the buyouts. I got to look now. Yeah, I mean, like we said before, though, they had to do it. It was like they needed a culture change. They needed to do it all over there, and, and that, that's the cost. I mean, if he didn't do it, you know, they wouldn't be in as good a position as they are right now, even if it's not the ideal position. Exactly. Uh, I think it's unfortunate, R.A., but at this point, I think you have to be sellers. Another name that's come up, and it sucks because I love their, their big heavy guys and, and how they played last year. The offensive output just has not been there from no. Green, uh, Greenway and Felino, and that's been a, a huge anchor with the lack of goal scoring I think the power play from an overall standpoint all year has been pretty good but guys in when we were on that TNT broadcast for that game against the avalanche if, since uh, January 8th 15 games they'd played they'd only scored 15 five on five goals Oof. if you can't put the net puck in the net five on five and if you're only doing it at that rate you don't belong anywhere near a playoff spot I think that a playoff team, though, could go out there and use a type of guy like Greenway. I don't know if they're willing to part ways with him. Uh, I, I think that they personally, from an overall team span, standpoint, have enough big meat in their lineup for today's standards. If they wanted to get a pretty good haul for a team who's in, in desperate need of a, a big body in the bottom six, I, I wonder what they could get for him. Maybe he's going to remain patient from here on out, Billy G, because they don't really have many guys that they could get rid of that are going to bring back value. Um, I I know that they wanted to get Dumba off the books to potentially bring something in for this year. I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think you're getting the return. But his $6 million comes off the books next year. So I just look at it as a shuffle the deck, get these guys some experience down the stretch of playing in competitive games, and move on to next year. Yeah, Greenway in the first year of a three-year, $9 million extension. He's got uh, two goals and four assists, six total points in 39 games. He has been That's struggling tough. this year. I don't know if a change of scenery is in the office How many has Felino got? And I, I don't mean to pick on these guys, man. You have some good years. That's a career year for me. <laughs> so I, <laughs> Aaron called them out. Oh, did he recently? Right? I think he mentioned well, the, Felino. I think he mentioned Hartman as guys who just kind of had, hopefully they start scoring more. Yeah, yeah Hart, I know Hartman Felino, they had first Felino has four goals through 44 games. Yeah, they're just really lacking that second punch of offense. So, sucks for the Wild fans because they had such good momentum already, but I don't know what else to say. Yeah, uh, as for the Avs biz, I know you mentioned uh, Adam Henrique would be a good fit for him. You said he's got one year left after this year at $5.825 million. A modified no trade clause. He's 33. He's got 33 points in 55 games on a pretty uh, not-so-good Anaheim team. Do you think they actually pull the trigger on that biz? Or? 
I personally think as far as a centerman, he's the next hottest commodity in line. The other name being Larkin, and we'll get to him in a little bit. But Avs are going to have to respond by going to fill in that second line role. They have not gotten it done by um, Alex Newhook. He started the year in that second line center position. Uh, no consistent offense from him, and it's hard, man. You're going from you know, from being an in and out of the lineup type guy on that championship team to all of a sudden having a goal against, you know, second line center across the league. It ain't easy, man. Night in, night out. Um, so I, I hey, figured Biz. that that would be a night. And, and you don't probably have to overpay. There's not a lot of leveraging there where you could probably just do it. He may be at this point, given the, the, the desperate times, may command a first rounder. But I don't know. I feel like you get him with like an okay prospect in a second. Uh, what quickly, was that, Whit? Uh, quickly, according to Cap Friendly, this year they're getting hit for 12.7 on Parisi and Suter. Next year, 14.7. The next year, 14.7. And then it goes to 1.6 for three more years. Oh so they're just God. getting pounded. Pounded. They're getting their, now, those are the, the south. Sam that, Dildo is making. Lisa from Lindsay. <laughs> spiked. Spiked one. <laughs> yeah, that one's the one from the, the movie Seven. <laughs> <laughs> the strap on, the knife on the end, the machete, uh, machete cock. What's in the box? Who, who else? Who else do you think could help the Avalanche? I think that like Timo Meyer is the next biggest guy, but he's a winger and he is so deeply rooted to New Jersey right now, and they have to respond with something, especially the way Posh has been talking him up and getting Timo Meyer with all these other Eastern teams in the mix. Who is the guy that you go out and get if you're the Avalanche and you want to repeat? Uh, I don't know. I sure. think if Detroit falls off, you could see Tyler Bertuzzi go. I think that'd be an interesting well, he, one. Yeah, they, now they're saying he's not getting traded because it, all of they're a sudden in the mix. Detroit's but I'm saying great, he's playing awesome. Yeah, if they fall off, though, I think you could see them make some moves. Well, they haven't have, fallen off, and that probably should bring us to our next point and final fucking offer. I talked to Stevie Y this morning before I hopped on. Eight point seven five Dylan Larkin times eight years. If you don't want it, you can fuck off. Eight point seven five is our final offer. For for him to have, I think what is it, fifteen points in the seven games since the All Star break, or fifteen points in the last seven games? Like, it's all this talk and all these interviews from Biz three minutes before the game. Are you going to resign? And all of a sudden, he's kind of just like, "Fuck this! Like, I'm just going to play my bag off. And if they don't want to sign me to what I want, then move me." Because at some point, you're going to have to come to the realization as a Wings fan. If he's not signed by deadline day, he's gone, right? You can't I would hold say on that would be, a f- I, I, that would be that would be a fair fair guesstimation. So all yeah, of a sudden you, you're Detroit and you're like, all right, we're we're gonna lose Larkin and Bertuzzi for nothing. So it's it's it. He's putting the pressure on and and he's being an absolute player and and forcing their hand like. It, 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 it's like, I mean, Lemieux, Jesus, Eiserman's such a legend. He knows what he's doing. He did this in Tampa, but he's got to realize, like, I, I, maybe I'm overplaying my hand in a sense, right? Like, this kid continues to step up his game the closer we get to deadline day. Like, what do we do here? So it's, it's a, it, it, with the Kane, the Kane moving is like the number one story in the NHL after that. With how he's playing right now, this Larkin saga is so interesting to me. I didn't tell you guys I got a text from a Stanley Cup, multiple Stanley Cup winning coach, a FaceTime actually, and then followed by a text because I was getting ragged about the question that I asked him on air. And I said, I go, do you think he's worth $9 million? And he goes, Biz, he goes, those are the types of players that you don't realize how important they were to the lineup till they're gone. And he goes, in free agency, he's worth $9 million all day long. And yes, I would give him the $9 million. And I said, fuck okay. it. I said, I'll go eat a bag of dicks then, I guess. <laughs> yeah. But I'm, glad, he- I'm glad I lit a fire under his ass then to get that $9 million. You're, you're welcome, Dylan Larkin. You should be sending me a little care package after you sign it. Since the All-Star break, Biz, seven goals, six assists, 13 points in seven games. And, yeah, the Wings, they won oh, five straight. They, they swept the Western Canada before Seattle cooled them off a little. I mean, they're in the mix, man. 60 points, 55 games. They're just two points back of uh, the wild card right now. I mean, they got a really tough schedule. 15 of their last 27 games are versus current playoff teams, and they played 27 games in 52 days. That's crazy. Uh, Billy Husso's been great, had his best month since October. Uh, they also extended defenseman Oli Mata, two-year, $6 million deal. 
But we'll see if, if they stay hot, if they get in playoffs. Wit, if they're like within a couple points right before the deadline, do you think Stevie Y stands pat or maybe make some minor moves for like depth? I don't know. It's all the Larkin Bertuzzi thing. It's I, I, okay. <laughs> you're not you're not going out and adding these minor pieces to possibly get in the playoffs and make a run if you don't have these guys signed, unless you're totally fine with going to free agency and seeing if you can get it done when the season ends, which we saw happen with Forsberg in Nashville. It's not unheard of, but it's a certainly risky uh, way to go about things. I'll say that. But I I, I think Detroit. They haven't been in the playoffs in so long. The fan base is amazing. Original six with the new arena. You'd have to think they're tilt, full tilt into getting in. What do you what do you call that wrestling move? The reversal. It's like it seemed like Stevie Y had Larkin by the balls a little bit, and then he did the fucking switcherouski. Where it's like after yeah. the playoff, I don't know. He must have been doing a different protein powder than I was doing in Fort Lauderdale because he came out of that thing swinging. Holy shit! <laughs> uh, another team my round that jumped right back into the race. This. <laughs> uh, the Ottawa Senators, well, before they lost to the Bruins today, they had won seven of nine. Not dead yet. Uh, Brady Kachuk, man, absolute beast all year. Uh, 60 points in 55 games, leads the team with 77 penalty minutes. Jimmy Stu right behind him, 59 points in 51 games. Claude Giroux, what a year he's having. Uh, 22 goals, 52 points. How about Drake Batherson, man? This kid, 144 points in his first 200 NHL games. Only Spezza, uh, Yashin, and Alfredson have more in franchise history. So that kid's on fire. And also, Biz, these numbers jumped out at me with Ottawa. They're third in the league in power play, 26.1, and ninth in uh, penalty killing, 81.4. I don't know, man. This team, again, they lost today, but they've had five different goalies. They're still kind of in the mix there. And similar to Detroit, they got a tough schedule, 15 of their last 27 versus current playoff team. So, Biz, I mean, if you're the GM there, you just kind of wait and see where you are March 1st, or you kind of let these kids get the experience? What do you think? I'm going to hand this one over to Wit Dog. Well, I'll say, I'll, I'll say they, they're a fun team to watch. First, I want to talk about Stutzel, Jimmy Stu. I, since January 1st, he's been one of the best players in the NHL. His points per game is up there near anyone. He's got a crazy amount of skill. That's a guy that you're, as a Senators fan, you're like, thank God we hit a home run with that draft pick because I think you got a stud on your hands the next 10 years. The other thing I want to mention, Brady Kachuk, you talk about his numbers, what a leader he is. Today in Boston, I was watching the game before we started recording. Perfect, like, kind of uh, description of him as a player. He goes in on the forecheck. He's flying, right? They're playing for the playoffs. He runs over Lindholm, who's quietly been a top 10 defenseman in the league, maybe even better than that this entire season. Runs him over. Chases down the puck and dives to get a backhand pass to somebody in the slot. Allmark ended up making like a 10-bell glove save. But you're like, that's fucking Brady Kachuk. That's a true captain right there. And that's how he plays every single night. So it's not that surprising that this team hasn't really just kind of shut it down midseason and had this usual senator lull after the after the Christmas break and, and January 1st of just being completely out of it. He's, as Biz uses the term, carried his team into the fight, just like Matthew's doing in Florida. Florida. So it was just like yep. the perfect play to describe him as a player. And I think, too, Giroux's been awesome. I don't know if they're getting – I will say right now I don't think they're, they're getting in. I don't think there's a chance they get in just because of how many teams are right there. But it was a season in which they looked to be playing – games that mattered in March and I think they will be and that's what builds towards the following season and years after that so while maybe this year won't be a considered a complete success because I don't think they get in it's 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 like seeing the correct uh what's ride to the top happen trajectory so trajectory the, tra is the trajectory of the team is changing and I mean, I know there were rumors early in the year when they were really struggling at getting rid of that coach. I feel like guys love yeah. playing for him, and he's they, getting a lot yeah. out of a group that, that doesn't have a lot. So you mentioned the goaltending situation and what they've been through. It's, it's Brady Kachuk leading these guys with a bunch of other young studs. So Josh Norris being out too, that sucks because what a player he is. And, and it's, 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 it is bright futures ahead with a new ownership coming, possibly a new arena, and a team that should be competing for a long time in the next couple of years. What a breakdown by you. Pat yourself on the back, Mr. You're muted. Whitney. Now come up. I'm muted. No. You're still muted. I, no, no. I hear him. No, it's, no, your, he's not. it's your internet. It's your 40th oh. birthday internet. Uh, hey, take a lap. We can't hear take you another guys. lap. That's two episodes. You can't? <laughs> yeah. It, can we, you guys hear me? Oh, yeah, I, I think it was my headphones. headphones. I can hear you. It was my yeah, headphones. Yeah. Crystal clear. These things are Do trash. a lap, buddy. Do a lap. Nah. You got to do another one, brother. Um, <laughs> 
But just to, to, to piggyback what Witt just said, it was this early in the season. This is me on the pod right now. <laughs> 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 He's holding up a full skeleton for those of you listening who can't see on the YouTube channel. <laughs> By the way, you can watch our full podcast on the Spit and Chicklets YouTube. You just got to subscribe. A little quick plug for my boy G. Um, GJ Smith, a lot of criticism from the fan base. They were asking for his head earlier in the season when the team wasn't playing well. It was Brady Kachuk in an interview who was backing everybody off saying, this is accountability in the locker room from the players. We love playing for this guy. We need to pick it up in here, and they have done so since. So you talk about this team love playing for this coach and, and, and the coach. He, uh, yeah, he, he, he's, he's a player's coach. Say coach one more time, you fucking idiot. <laughs> I, I mean, he is Lil Walt, right? Right, with like just like he plays just like his father out there. He like a carbon copy, uh, and down to the number Crazy. too, man. Love watching him play. Uh, well, keeping with the Kachuk team, his brother, man, he's been everything as advertised for Florida. Twenty eight goals, forty eight assists, seventy six points in fifty six games. Florida has been wildly inconsistent, but they're still in the mix as well. Inconsistent goaltender, but they could still get in if they play a little better here. What what should take on the Florida Panthers? Ah. Uh. I don't know. They are playing better, but I'm not a Panthers guy, really. I, I love Sean Thornton. He's part of the, the business side of the operation over there. Uh, former agent of mine, Paul Kropelka, works for the team. I'm a Kropelka guy. I just I don't really root for the Panthers. I, I, don't, I don't get excited watching the team play, especially when they're at home where their building just lacks this like punch when you're watching on TV. I, I, I still think the trades they made this summer – and and I I look at Huberdo and how much he's struggled and we'll get into his agent Alan Walsh's tweet. Oh, yeah. Holy oh, yeah. shit! We'll that later. Um, <laughs> but it's just been such an odd season. Now with them playing this well, now maybe it makes a little sense in terms of the enormous changes that happened with that entire organization over the season. It took them a long time finally they're going. So maybe they continue running the running running the gauntlet here and they end up getting in. Which I mean, if you're the Bruins. Who do you want to play in the first round? If you have the chance between Washington, the Islanders, Florida, Pittsburgh, I mean, I'm with you. I'd Whit. rather play the I'd Islanders rather, and the Capitals over the Panthers. Yeah, I'd rather put my cock and balls in a blender than see the Florida Panthers in the playoffs. Uh, <laughs> I'll go even further to say that I'd rather see the Islanders get that wild card spot than see the Florida Panthers. I don't know what – the offense is incredible. The defense is a little suspect. I don't know what you're getting from goaltending. I will say it is fun to have them in this mix of, of 26 teams that are going for that wild card position. Um, I think that we probably need to shift it over to that other team that's fighting for it in the Islanders and some devastating news as of right now that's come out of Long Island. This is uh, – mind you, we're recording on Monday, and this is about four hours before puck, puck drop between the Penguins – and, and Islanders facing off for the second time in the last week. They had a very a crazy game. What was a 5-4 final uh, where, the, where the Islanders stormed from behind, a very emotional win, as their fan base keeps telling me online. But the latest, Matty Barzell, and he has got a lower body injury in which he ended up getting dinged up in the Boston game. I'm hearing rumblings that it's pretty serious and it could potentially be the rest of the year. They keep it. They keep their fucking cards so close to their chest. I don't know what's going on, but if you lose Matty Barzell, there's no way you're getting that fucking wild card position. I saw a tweet that said week to week and that they think he'll be back before the regular season. I know, but so, I'm a fucking rumor boy, buddy. I don't fucking care about what the that, those tweets yeah, are saying. Exactly. Yeah. Guys, exactly. I think from what I, was heard, what I was told, this rumor boy was told was his season depends on how the Islanders do. If they start to win, they'll keep him in there. But if they start to lose a few games here and get out of the race, they're going to shut him down for the that's season. That's a hell of a rumor. That's huh. a well, a okay, so if that's the case, that means – he's going to be still injured when he comes back and maybe he won't be the same player. So that's a kick in the nuts for a team that makes the big deal and all of a sudden they lose their best player. That sucks. Any, any rumors you want to throw in the mix here with the Islanders, R.A.? Uh, no, I, I'm, I, I, don't, I don't consider myself a rumor boy too much. I mean, I, you guys are great at it, but I don't know. I think it's just my... my, my uh, Oh, yeah, you're a journalist. Adam State. Yeah, you go right for I the have, false information I, as opposed I to integrity, being around the bush. Integrity. 
Uh, <laughs> I, we should say Florida, after coming back uh, against Anaheim today, they are currently the wild card one, the first wild card, 64 points, but they do have five more games played than Pittsburgh, who's in the second spot. So this race is going crazy. One more trade to get to before we bring on Chandler Stevenson. Uh, the Rangers went out and got Tyler Mott for the second year in a row at the deadline. Uh, they sent uh, Ottawa forward Julian Gauthier in a conditional seventh in 2023. Uh, Tyler Mott had three goals and six assists in 38 games with uh, Ottawa this year. He'll be UFA. The 25-year-old Gauthier had nine points in 40 games for the Rangers. He'll be RFA. And the Rangers, man, they've been on a heater, too. Had a seven-game winning streak snap Saturday. They do have points in 10 straight. They're four behind Jersey. Who they, they, We just said earlier, what they'll probably play the Devils. But, man, the Devils right now, they're only, let's see, three points back of Carolina. So I don't know if that race is over yet either. I, I, I think Carolina ends up winning that division. Um, as I picked in preseason, as basically every person in the world picked in preseason, um, Mott is just – he can play up and down the lineup. Drury knows him from last year, and, and I think it's something when you look at that team, like what else do we need? All right, we know we can trust the guy who came in and, and was a part of this squad last year. It's, it's just – I don't know. How often has that happened where a guy gets traded to a team and then at the same time of the year, the following Baby, year, gets I'm traded back. back to the same team? I'm sorry D- that I left The David Perron you, special, hey. right? <laughs> Baby, I'm back. Yeah, well, it's uh, <laughs> the, yeah, the Rangers. The Rangers have. have I mean, we, we went into our Rangers pump session. I think it was last week in terms of like a true Stanley Cup my contender. Wrist still sore. Yeah, exactly. So I, 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 I do still think it'll be them in Jersey, though. I don't think Jersey will catch Carolina, which means it'll happen. Okay. All right, boys. Baby, uh, I'm back. <laughs> baby, come back. check please. on the beat. Okay, baby, any, I'm back. Also in any, Florida, I got a busy stick out. on the way back. I didn't shout Joe. out uh, Brandon Montour. <sighs> Guy makes three and a half. He's a UFA after next year. I think he's got 48 points already this year. Just an unbelievable season. So you lose Uyghur and this Guy steps up, plays this well. He's a big part of that success. Maybe Zito knew some more than D-love. us. Mm-hmm. Some love for some defensemen. Yeah, mm. shout out to the Panther Bar too when we were down. That was good shit. But uh, I think we should send it over to Chandler Stevenson right now. We had a nice chat with the uh, Vegas Golden Knight All-Star back when we were down in Fort Lauderdale. So... Well, let's do that right now. This interview is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is the exclusive ticketing partner of Barstool Sports. Created by fans for fans, Game Time is a new ticketing app that makes it easier than ever to score last minute deals on tickets to sports, concerts, and shows, and they guarantee the lowest price. They crack the code on how to score deals on last minute tickets. It's possible with the Game Time app. The biggest last-minute price drops can be found on the seats you thought you'd never be able to buy. Me and G have been talking about this forever. I've seen concerts, Red Sox games, Bruins games. I'm actually going to Bruins Rangers in a couple weeks thanks to game time. They take care of us, and the purchase process takes two taps in 10 seconds. And once you buy your tickets, they're delivered directly to your phone. There's no printer needed. The app also allows you to easily share tickets with friends via text so you can get in the game seamlessly. Skip the hassle and enjoy the moment. Download the Game Time app or go to the website, enter your email, and redeem the code CHICKLETS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms do apply. Once again, download that Game Time app or go to the website, enter your email, redeem the code CHICKLETS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. And if you're at the Bruins Ranges in a couple weeks, I will see you there. Game time. Get your tickets there. Well, we got a nice late surprise here on our interview day, which is appropriate because this guy was a nice late surprise to the All-Star game here in Florida. Taken third round by Washington in 2012. He won a Stanley Cup with them six years later. He's now in his fourth season with the Vegas Golden Knights, making his very first All-Star game appearance. Congratulations and thanks for stopping by Chandler Stevenson. What's going on, pal? Not a lot. Thanks for uh, thanks for having me. <laughs> those are some pleasure, nice man. chicklets you got there. Yeah, when did you get those nice new chicklets? I knew Biz would be bringing those up. Those are fake chicklets. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's hey. uh, that's uh, Mark Andre Fleury teeth. That's his pattern. Oh yeah. Hey, late edition All Star. What was your trip planned? I know you had something planned. Yeah, uh, Santa Barbara with the family. Little uh, family time and had to turn around halfway and uh, make our way back. Everyone's coming down here though. Yeah, they're here now. Nice. Uh, parents and brother and uh, his old lady are uh, on their way. What's That's up great. with Santa Barbara? Like, have you ever been there before? No, no, never been. Um, just didn't really want to be on a plane, but I was on a plane here. So um, <laughs> would rather drive uh, than be on a plane for five hours. So uh, and just Kylie's nice anywhere you go. Yeah. 
How far is that drive from Vegas to uh, Santa Barbara? It's about four and a half, five yeah, hours. We stopped there in the, the West Coast, though. We made a oh, oh, yeah. on our 14 hour ride from <laughs> LA to San Jose. Oh, we so uh, Brett Merriman could see the ocean, and it was dark an hour into the ride. We had this uh, Barstool employee who booked us on that drive up to where? We were going to, to basically San, San Fran. San Jose from LA. Yeah. What was his nickname? Uh, office manager. Office manager, uh, Fred. So we booked a trip along the coastal highway, but fuck, it was it, the sunset two hours into the trip. So we're driving on these windy roads in this RV. We're about to fucking tip the thing over in the ocean. So I, I would imagine you had a better drive than that. Yeah. Yeah, it was. I mean, it's still cold there right now, but um, yeah, it was kind of that was uh, what we were what our break seemed like just a two hour or four hour drive because two hours and two hours back. So uh, it was kind of funny that um that's how I was just kind of saying how my break was, but obviously being here and getting to do this is uh, special for sure. Uh, it, it must be just a, a great feeling this season, like just having an unreal year, like anything change over the off season, just more ice time. Like how has this kind of all happened where you're just really exploding? I guess last year was good too, though. So it's kind of building on that. Yeah. Just honestly, since I got to Vegas, um, they just let me play, uh, let me be myself and um, just the opportunity and, I mean, you guys can account for it. Anytime you get more ice time, you're going to feel better about never yourself. Never happened. So. <laughs> I just never got it. I, just, I, I kept banging. He fucking, loved warm-ups. The minute I'd ask, they'd put me in the press box. Yeah, but hey, you'd, your potential would be through the ceiling if, if you got some more minutes. But. Yeah, popcorn per minute. <laughs> That's what went up. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, it's just in uh, Vegas, they just yeah, kind of let me be myself and um, just – confidence grew and um just kind of rolling with it and uh playing with some pretty good players along the way too 11 years later after you get drafted do you have a, do you ever think at a certain point no way you're gonna be an nhl all-star maybe even a regular in the nhl and here you are in a full auto deal yeah i mean uh that's something that you know you just kind of pinch yourself at and something that you know you won't really realize until after the fact um i think uh that's kind of the mo this weekend is just you know something that you're just kind of bank and memories and stuff like that i mean being here with you guys is pretty cool pretty special and uh yeah i think it's something that you know you'll just be thinking about later and uh kind of reminiscing on uh once the time has passed and just kind of kind of a wow moment so you were a late addition to the interview i don't know much about your your past career did you play junior or go to college i would imagine junior hockey were you a scorer there and then when entering pro kind of had to adapt a checker role and evolved his game offensively yeah, played in uh, Regina uh, for four years. And yeah, just kind of, you know, climbed the ropes there. And uh, then, yeah, drafted to Washington. Same thing there in Hershey. Uh, like I was saying, played against you in Manch. And, um, was I chirping you from the bench? How, hey, how bad of a skater was I at that time? Because that was after my time in the NHL. I was skating you, like, you know you what I was skating looked, like? You must I was, have so I was skating so ugly, I looked like Mark Stone out there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was surprised at how big you were. Um, I wasn't expecting. Uh, That's what everybody tells me. Like yeah. I look like a fucking midget on Instagram or something. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it's uh, you know. It's because I wasn't bending my what, knees when I was yeah, skating. Maybe that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just yeah, sitting on the bench and then you stand up and it's like, oh, he's tall. So. You ever seen a better doorman in your life though? No, no, I uh, I have not yet to see one. Were you were you a skilled guy at that time? Were you buzzing out there? Were you getting your twenty minutes a game? Were you getting your touches? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Um, it's just you know as you kind of progress and as you age, uh, a little bit more responsibility and um, yeah, it's just kind of been every league you know in junior and then the American League and uh, the NHL. It's just kind of been you know just progressing and a um, little bit more responsibility as it comes. That's was, pretty great though that. It, you haven't been handed first or second line minutes. Like you've earned them at every level. So I'm guessing even if you had to do with that in junior, it's it's helped you kind of just be used to like, all right, maybe I'm going to start on the fourth line, but I'm going to work my way up. Yeah, I think, you know, that just kind of is the, you know, just be yourself. I think that's, uh, you know, try not to change as much as you can and uh, just be yourself. And, and it's obviously tough at times, you know, when you're not playing as much or through a skit or whatever, but um, I think, yeah, the more that, you know, you play and, um, you know, the more you just kind of yeah, work your way up, uh, you just feel more comfortable. It's obviously nerve wracking at first when you're, you know, lining up against, you know, Sid or 
McDavid or somebody like that, you're kind of like fucked up, eh? <laughs> McDavid, like you shitting bricks or what? Yeah, it's uh, kind of strictly defense. Uh, <laughs> at least you can. Like, we're, least we're having a D zone shift. You can somewhat skate with them. Like you're fast. <laughs> you just you're still gonna outskate you, you, but it, yeah. you, you go into your pregame not basically being I'm a blanket tonight. I'm not yeah. fucking worrying about that Rondell at all. Yeah, I'm playing defense tonight. Yeah, not getting a minus, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's you know it's you're kind of can't really believe it, and then uh, yeah, there's some more that you you know play against uh guys like that of you know that caliber uh just kind of second nature i guess once you're more comfortable with it no uh, wor- no word of a lie my last nhl shifts were in an <clears throat> exhibition game up in canada with the la kings organization and mcdavid was playing in that exhibition game i got cut out there fucking two times against him fucking dash one each time within <laughs> fucking seconds he scored it, both times or he had a point he fucking undressed our line buddy it was like i was like oh my god this i knew right then and there i was i was no longer cut out for the national <laughs> <laughs> and then I literally stepped on the plane and Sutter called me over and goes, hey, you're going down. And I was like, I, 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 hey, I know, hey, hey, I know. If you didn't come get me, I was coming to fucking walk over, buddy. <laughs> no, but because it's the way that he crossovers and shit. So like that, like going into that game, are you really concerned about the way you take angles against them? Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, it's I mean, it's the same with like uh, McKinnon. I mean, if, if you're kind of. I don't even know how to describe, you know. The, I call him a because like, he's like, oh, 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 oh. yeah, he's coming at you like a horse. Yeah, like it's like just a stallion. Yeah, I, th- I think if you make a move, then they'll just make the move that they want you to make. So you just kind of stand there and just kind of like, you're cross-eyed. Yeah, LBRB, you just kind of lay down and just wave your stick and just try to yeah uh, uh, get them, you know, not expecting what what you should be doing. But um, yeah, I mean when you're in person you know playing against those guys and um it's kind of happening it's just kind of like you don't really understand how that's possible yeah. from like okay now you're where you are right now in like a stick handle in, and it's in just, one second yeah it's Less like than you, you blink second. and it's like they're there and you just keep blinking and they're just in different spots and it's just kind of like how is that um, possible who are the pros that help you evolve as a, the player you are like who are the ones that you bounced a lot of stuff off and, and had the most impact on your career to date backstrom Oshi, OV, um, even Tom uh, Wilson. I mean, he was, uh, I was a roommate my first year, and uh, he was a guy that, you know, right from day one was set to be in the NHL. And he's got to have the biggest hog, too. He's, <laughs> he's got, he's got, that guy's got it all, right? He does have it all. Fucking yeah, guy, he man. does I have it all. I hate those guys. But uh, yeah, Backstrom's one of those guys. I mean, Swedes, they're just, you know, the best kind of salt of the earth guys. And, um, yeah, he's just, you know, one of the best guys I've ever played with, uh, Backy, and he just, the stuff that he does and how he makes the game look is just kind of, it's like Picasso, he's just kind of having his way out there with you, and yeah, he can pass forehand, backhand better than anybody I've ever seen. I find it fascinating how the, like all these players get it done differently. Yeah. You know, like you, you, the way you're describing the players and how they attack you. And he's more just like fluid and like can he slows it down. He slows it down yeah. where you're like, okay, we'll just go harder at him. And it's like, nah, man, it's like a, almost like a zoo ball. Slippery. He's, gonna he's you- unreal. He's unreal. He'll always be like a little underrated too, I think, just because Ovi's there. But when you mentioned, you know, since you got to Vegas, like offensively, it's kind of exploded. I remember seeing you in Washington, like tons of speed, but did you never really get much chance to play with with OV or, or on the top two lines? Were you were you ever getting opportunity there in terms of like more minutes? A little bit. I mean, um, it was the one playoff uh, against Pitt um, in 2018. That's, That's probably what I'm thinking about. That was the game that, yeah, I played with uh, OV and Kuzi. Um, and then the round before against Columbus, I was with uh, Oshie and Backy a bit. Um, but yeah, we were like healthy the whole year. So, um, we just kind of, we're just rolling kind of the whole year, it seemed like. And, um, yeah, once I got to Vegas, it was, uh, you know, kind of right away, like, let's see what you got kind of thing. And we're going to put you, you know, on every line on wing and just kind of go from there. Um, you must've loved hearing that though. Like I'm going to get to play a lot more now, right? You must've been excited. Very yeah. Leash too. Yeah. And yeah. Yep. And that's just kind of, it's nerve wracking at first. Cause you're ne- not used to that. Like go back to the lining up against McDavid and it's just kind of now, like now what do I do? Like that game on. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I think just, you know, the more that you, 
played and then it's like oh now i'm on the power play and now it's like you're handling the puck more and um it just kind of comes back to you a bit um you know from when you're younger it's you know things seemed a little bit you know more fluid and then yeah it just kind of comes to you and um yeah it's just kind of been in the rear view and just playing now just trying to be myself and and have some fun this is a random question uh face-offs how good are the top guys are they easier to go against because they're like maybe a little bit smaller than the grinder types on the bottom lines no like you you go against you know bergeron and it's like he's you know, snapping them back oh, on you yeah it's like you're just kind of like trying to see how hard you can push your stick into the <laughs> ice to maybe like he doesn't lift your stick this time or something like that but is he cheating or something yeah, what's they, he doing I don't even know. It's like a big like sweep, like, and it's just you. He's cheating, isn't he? Yeah, I'm not, che- <laughs> yeah, not cheating. Clip it, or like, Rennell. Or, or like Sid, like does that <laughs> forehand slap to the boards, and it's like you can't even. Like, it's you're Popeye. To stop, yeah, you're trying to stop a one timer. Exactly, he's Popeye. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, there's certain guys that it's just they've been around. They know all the little tricks. You'll try something, and it's like oh, like kind of seen that before, and just like lift their stick and yeah pucks back and yeah some guys just snap and make you look silly that Jim. was a good question by me by the way yeah i like that thanks, face thanks. Question. Yeah. during that whole cover you played all, all 24 games now did you have a long time relationship with trots like going back to minors or did you, he have your instant you have his instant trust in that playoffs or what uh yeah that was uh the first time i had him um and yeah it was just uh kind of this is he just kind of made it clear this is what we're going with uh lineup wise and um yeah it's just kind of that obviously helped you know huge too just getting those minutes and um you know his first penalty kill with beags so obviously going out against the top unit it was you know challenging and um to have that you know trust was uh you know something that'll just you know make you feel good and um i mean playing with beags he was you know he was a warrior yeah exactly he, he he was you know you'd lose your guy it's like oh no Beegs has got him it's like he's got his guy it's like he was just yeah like a warrior you just and he wanted every league and he was uh yeah, first to ever do it right yeah yeah he was uh you know a cinderella story kind of if, if that's what you want to call it but yeah he wanted every league and was just yeah like every day it was like if you're going against Beegs, like you you were losing it didn't matter if it was an optional skate or what but he was workhorse now you were playing with Baxham the first game of the playoffs, right? You you got bumped up to him. Yeah, yeah, with him and uh, with him and Osh, and yeah, I mean, playing with them, it's you just got to kind of skate with your head down and just have your stick out, and yeah. it's your puck's just gonna hit it. Oshie's awesome out there. Oh, like he's the best. He, he just he makes the game like look easy too at times, and then you don't think he sees you, he just runs you over with like a reverse hit. You he knew just, he's a sick puppy. We him getting the cup checks so every fucking game in the hallway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What was your pregame with all that n- nonsense? I'll call it. Uh, I, I like it e- even now. Like I just kind of you know once the like guys are walking out or the clock's done, I'm kind of just putting my helmet on. Uh, I don't have that early pregame routine. It's kind of you know. Let's go. Yeah, like I could go 30 minutes before a game and just get dressed and go out kind of thing. But, um, yeah, those are fun. I mean, even today, you know, seeing those when, you know, Washington posts some OVs, a comedy show and in, <laughs> in that and Carly and all those guys. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's uh, I don't have much of a superstition or routine. Uh, do you have any hobbies outside of hockey? What do you do? Golf. I like golfing. Golf that's or, what every guy says now you go to they saskatoon wanna... all summer yeah it's too hot in vegas in the yeah in the summer it's like you can't even be outside and it's and there's probably a bunch of local pros around there right to skate and stuff or... uh a no. little bit uh mcnab goes back here and there he's from small town uh outside and used to train with him and uh yeah he's uh good shit i mean just farmer and yeah, yeah. yeah spend uh got to know him when I was like 14 or 15, uh, same trainer and stuff like that. So, uh, going back with him and, uh, spending the summers there and it's just go to the lake, uh, just kind of low key. That's how I liked it. Chill. The only thing special about how you day with the cup, take it home. Yeah, I was at home. Uh, I actually kind of was fortunate enough. I got two days with it cause I went to uh Humboldt cause I was the year that they had the oh. bus crash. So, yeah. um, the first day was yeah with family and friends and just kind of doing your own thing went to a fire hall and um just kind of things throughout the city and then the second day uh we took the bus with it uh 
uh humble with family and friends and nhl brought like a shrine of the hall of fame with sticks and jerseys and kind of the whole shebang and just it was like a full day and there was other pro guys there that uh doing little stick handling and stuff like that or shooting and it was just kind of a full day of everything with you know the families uh uh billet families and all that so it was a special day for sure and uh one that i just you know it hit close to home i knew two guys that were on the bus that uh survived so um yeah it was a good 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 day for sure that, that's that's unbelievable i was gonna i was gonna, i guess i had a transition I, yeah but i had to, yeah i had to, <laughs> oh, i have yeah, to ask about good. ovi because like just the celebration, the celebration videos him were, were out like when he goes he probably can hammer <laughs> drinks yeah he's like when people ask about him it's like he's made in a lab i mean like, oh yeah like farm that, animal yeah farm like animal. yeah like that puck that he takes to the mouth he, it's like he just kind of not even bleeding from it like i feel like you could take a butcher's knife to him and it would just kind of open his skin up he wouldn't even be bleeding from yeah. it like terminator yeah exactly yeah he's like the videos you see that's him every day like he's not you know a face for the camera or puts he's it on, on the for gas, the camera right? yeah he's 100%. yeah he's just 24 7 you know always you know having fun and um just he's busting guys himself. balls like or is he more just like just loud how, yeah, old, how like old do you think he everything is? all the above <laughs> like 48 yeah i don't know um is that a wig he's wearing <laughs> no oh, definitely not a wig okay. uh but yeah he's just one of a kind i mean just for the kind of guy he is i hope he breaks you know gretzky's record just because yeah. of what he is like everybody kind of said he wouldn't do it or he'd slow down and he's still scoring 50 yeah he's a maniac so going back to the celebration there was a question that i had to ask oshi but i forgot to um orpic was telling me about this story of somebody at the hotel or getting forgot in vegas the night of the celebration that kind of sounds familiar but i okay. can't like i, I think I about it gonna recall. i can check in my notes after if i still <laughs> have the exact question uh what, what's with uh oshi's uh beer wine combo did you ever experience that yeah, he just, I mean, there's a lot of guys are wine guys, and he just also likes beer too, so it's, it's kind of a two for one. Uh, you ever tried that already? Right? No, tried a lot of weird stuff. Not up to <laughs> you're, you're kind of, you're kind, he's talking like it's normal over here. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, we just had our rookie dinner in Vegas, and it was that's kind of how guys start, and then it's like, oh, sure, coming around with wine, I'll have some wine too, and it's you're just kind of doing both, and yeah, mixed bag. That's incredible. Every night in Vegas, it's kind of like the, you know, there's a new crowd there every night. You feel like have, it's almost like a Broadway performance. Like, it's like, you know, it's not like a middle of the season, like maybe a Washington, Boston, where it's like whole hum game. Does it feel like every night you have to, like, be on sort of more than usual? Uh, Yes and no. I mean, it's just – the fans are one of a kind there. I mean, it's Monday night or Saturday night. It's sold out and warm-ups is pretty much sold out too. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's just kind of a crazy place to, you know, kind of sit back and think like I'm playing hockey in Vegas right, right now right. and living in Vegas. You got medieval times on the ice before the game. Yeah, <laughs> like I, I, I remember there was uh, when we were there in the playoffs uh, for the finals, um, some of the black aces were down by the bars uh, before the game and overheard some table and they're like, yeah, we got tickets to some final tonight and like don't know what it is <laughs> never been like but yeah we're going and it was like the stanley cup finals and they're just kind of like yeah we're going to some show and it's supposed to be good so yeah it was kind of like i heard celine dion singing <laughs> yeah exactly like, i had to lose 65 grand at the mgm but they gave me these cup finals <laughs> <laughs> So I'll, I'll go. Hey, but we got a limo ride over <laughs> <laughs> and a great servant tour before the game. Yeah, the yeah. buffet. We, we, we got the passes for the yeah, buffet. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's just kind of, you know, you're on the strip, I guess, the first year. Guys are saying they'd, you know, get back from the road and go down to the strip and, you know, didn't matter what time it was at night from the road, they'd be on the strip and, and they just kind of got sick of it. And now you only go down there for families in town for right, a good right. meal or something are, are you cool with the crazy buckets and jerseys or are you more a little old school and traditional yeah i'm old school and traditional <laughs> i'm i mean even the white gloves i'm kind of one set of gloves 
two helmets, one set of pants, and yeah, that's. I mean, have as many jerseys as you want, but yeah, having to change the the pant, uh, the putting the shell on and new gloves is annoying. Yeah, like we got two sets of gloves, we got three sets of pants. You're gonna get dealt for three saying helmets. That. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, you yeah. Are. but that I mean that was just something that I I don't care about the jersey. It's just the gear. It's just a feel good thing. Like it's like fill with his pants it's I, I his are barely hanging on but he just has a comfort thing it's just a all a comfort thing i mean his shoulder caps are peck on his pecs it seems like pretty much <laughs> on his boobs on his boobs yeah his shoulder caps are on his boobs but boob <laughs> <laughs> they're just castle has so, got boob caps <laughs> yeah they're just so old and like his i mean his girdle could probably wrap around him twice it's just like something that is just routine for guys i mean sid's had the same same cup for forever so it's just I'm, Certain I'm picturing things. him in like a pregnancy photo where he's the, the front. He's, he's got Bauer like a cup. <laughs> they are like the Introducing old. Introducing the Bauer bra. They are like the old school Bauer with the like back. Hey, the the back is like the clip that you use done. for pants. We're getting canceled for fat shaming <laughs> Phil Kessel. That's a. Hey, if there's one way how I wanted to go out, it's it's that. The Iron Man. I want Phil to come on the show. He said he won't come on. Yeah, he never will. I don't, he he's not. He he hates media. He does. He's, I mean, that's like, it's just him. Like he still moves out there. Like he, yeah. he's still what he was in Toronto. Like he, his shot, like he'll come in and just like wire one top of the circles and the goalie won't even move. And it's like in and out and practice. And it's just kind of like, he's still got it. Like it, <laughs> he's, he's the Iron Man. Like How uncomfortable was he talking about being the Iron Man too? Like he's just, he doesn't even want to like talk about it. Right? Well, yeah, it seemed like every rink we went into on the road after it was like, with consecutive game 1018 it was like phil kessel he's just sitting on the bench kind of like waving and it's just kind of like Thank we're you. doing this again yeah exactly he's he's very uh low maintenance just kind of hang out and uh yeah just have fun i mean he's probably complaining about it all which is very on brand for him <laughs> yeah. it's very on brand right yeah it seems like if there's something to complain about it's you know you, but he, you hear her chiming in he, he just seems to do in such an amusing way that's all everybody talks about like yeah like he can get away with bitching all day where it's his type of humor yeah exactly he's uh i mean he's been such a good fit like he's like lt was saying he's like the glue for us that that we kind of were missing uh with you know revo and even flower um getting somebody like him it just kind of has brought everybody even a little bit closer what's your contract situation right now are you in a four year four year deal? four year yeah year uh, two of it one more year after this okay year three all right nice so then that was signed right when you got to vegas or uh it would have been after yeah the um year i got traded must have been nice so like for some security right first like big deal that you signed i mean just must have been pretty cool i deal. see that rolex yeah <laughs> yeah i mean that was uh you know just that it was uh just kind of every year to that point was like okay we'll get one year okay, yeah we'll qualifying year. offer yeah exactly just kind of that stuff you go through and to yeah get that it was just kind of like holy dina this is you yeah know. makes you just relax a touch like you're still like not changing anything but you're like all right i can breathe a little bit yeah exactly exactly and that just you know comes with even it, it moves into your play of just being comfortable and um yeah exactly you don't you know put it on cruise control but yeah. it just makes you relax a little bit who's the most fascinating players like in practice for you guys where they just push the pace like i mean you got petro on the back end stanley cup champion like what makes this team run i think just the first year just kind of helped them i mean um everybody kind of you know sent those guys off and you know they made it to the finals that year and it's still quite a few guys left from that team and it's just kind of that's the mo of you know vegas i feel like is um it was just kind of an underdog cinderella story that you still got you know marchie and smitty carly theo nabber all those guys that are still just kind of playing now for you know to try to get back to where they were and i think uh it's just the fans like even being at home and playing in vegas it was they're just get behind you so much it's just every game is feels like so much excitement because it's so loud and um i think just yeah trying to prove people wrong and um just that kind of fu attitude that uh i feel like it is 
I don't hate to get too hockey on you, but do you feel like with with this slip that the group's got to galvanize and maybe get through it? Like, I mean, you guys have not been playing well as of late. Yeah, I think last year, obviously, having like 500 plus man games lost was, you know, something that you're just scratching your head at. You and then it's happening really again. Out. Yeah, exactly. And now that it's happening again with Stoney getting his surgery again, it's kind of like, okay, hey, it's not just going to happen. You know, we're not just going to be in the playoffs. We're not just going to go to the final. Like, it's not just going to happen. So I think to kind of have that adversity last year to now it's like, okay, it's for real. Um, everybody has to kind of be better and pick up their play. I think that is something that we've, because we went through it, it's kind of not just going to happen for us now. Is, is Cassidy uh, hard on some guys? Like, I know, you know, he's had that reputation, but he had success at the beginning. Has it been a little tougher with him dealing with players as you've kind of lost a little bit? I mean, yes and no. Um He's he just uh, I'd say just expects a lot because um, I mean I feel you know any coach that expects a lot out of their team that he'll get a lot out of their team so um, for us it's just yeah like right now especially we haven't been winning games but we've been right there so it's yeah. kind of we're on like that end of a losing streak as opposed to getting blown you out. shouldn't be winning games and you're winning games type deal like we're playing better hockey but yeah, I mean, it's just tough. I mean, you got guys going through slumps that have never gone through slumps like they have. So it's it's going to turn around. But um, it's, yeah, it's tough to not grip your stick or get frustrated. But um, I think the break will be much needed thing. And Fuck, man, you forget like 82 games, oh. the ride you go on sometimes yeah. emotionally and like how much it affects you. and Peaks and valleys, bro. I, I was the type of guy, like it came home with me. Like I, I have a hard time shaking it. Some guys were so good about the minute they left the rink, it was family and that's all they thought about when they got there. It was all business. Are you the type of guy where you take it home a bit? Not really, um, especially now with, you know, a little guy. It's, you know, you kind of look at him and it's perspective. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't even matter. But, um, but yeah, it, it's obviously tough just because I've never gone through anything like this um, in my NHL career anyways of kind of the skid. But, yeah, like you try to not let the lows get too low or the highs too high. It's such a cliche thing to say, but that's kind of what it is. And then you get – into the dog days of you know oh, that yeah. 40 to 60 game mark it's like we're kind of just over halfway and then you kind of see the light at the end of the tunnel like but there's so many games march left now and april's coming yeah exactly so it's just yeah eight, like you said 82 games it's just like oh man like it's a lot of hockey and a lot of practices and just now i know why the together. guys used to drink <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. that's what i that's what i said i was fucked like why did everybody stop doing that we could have just all been on the same playing field here yeah. and had a little bit more fun during this some of this misery yeah you know yeah kind of no I have to have a beer period yeah. yeah yeah fucking protein shakes uh what else you got going on this all-star weekend now, obviously playing the game you're taking not part in any of the skills competitions this ain't gonna break till after so yeah uh fastest skater um oh, Ooh, shit. could compete yeah. in that <laughs> you have undercover <laughs> wheels uh, oh, wheels, I guess we'll see. I mean, you know, when you going back to the McDavid and McKinnon talk, it, yeah. I don't feel like I have that. But um, yeah, they're kind of freaks of nature in that sense. So I don't know. Hope just don't look stupid. That's kind of they what stretch I, in beforehand. Are, you are actually they, have to warm up for the skills competition. Are they competing in that? I don't know. I don't know if they are or not. Yeah, um, then you're fucked. Yeah, I don't know how the if it's you know two guys a team or what it is, but. Um, yeah, it's uh, something that is more nerve wracking, I think, than all the other ones. Rather than just step into hardest shot, something like that. That yeah, yeah, yeah. That's for all the like. That's for the vets who get the most banged up the night before, where it's like they get first pick. They're like, I'm just walking up and taking a clapper. I'm not stick handling this thing. I ain't fucking skating around your stupid ring. Yeah, I had too many cocktails last night. I'm shit faced. Well, uh, what else other than a fastest skater? Sorry. That's all that I, I don't know if there's everybody participates in something. I'm just kind of doing as I'm told. Um, yeah, I, that's all that it says on my sheet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the all-star pigeon. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. First timer. Yeah, exactly. Well, hey. Yeah, we appreciate you, you coming so on, man. Fun, Congrats man. on your success. I know the team's whatever struggling, but it was a it was a, it was was a great start. So you guys will turn it around, and thank you for joining the show. Yeah, no, thanks, guys. We appreciate it. Big thanks to Chandler Stevenson for sitting down with us down in Fort Lauderdale a few weeks back. Great guy. Uh, just a great story, too, man. Kind of a low-key fella, but speed demon as well. So moving right along. 
Alan Walsh had another tweet gone wild, Biz. Uh, after Calgary lost at home to Detroit 5-2 to Thursday, uh, Jonathan Huberdeau's agent, <laughs> Walsh, he took to the bird. Uh, he tweeted, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. Also, negativity sucks the joy right out of players. CC NHL Flames, in case people weren't sure what he was talking about. Uh, and the tweet left his client, Huberdo, answering questions Friday. I'm sure he was crazy about that. He said, we're all frustrated. We can play better, and that's about it. It doesn't come from me. Yeah, it's my agent, but it's from him. It's his account. He made the tweet. It doesn't reflect on me or the guys. We all love each other. We're a close team. We're going to grind this out make the playoffs. Uh, as for Walsh, uh, Huberdeau said, I talked to him this morning, gave him a call when I saw that. I don't want that to happen. Huberdeau obviously not having a, a fantastic year so far. 38 points in 53 games. His eight-year, $84 million deal is going to kick in next season. Uh, but wait, let me ask, does Walsh run the risk of like losing current or future clients with this? Or do people just say, I ah, just fucking Twitter. Who cares? Billion in sales. He didn't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah, I over a billion is, in sales, is, all right. Over a billion in sales of what? I think he signed over a billion dollars in contracts. He doesn't give a fuck. He's already fucking made his Has whatever three really? percent. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure. I think he said it when he was on our podcast. This guy's, by the way, favorite fucking personality in hockey right now. This guy does not give a fuck. <laughs> that kind he's, of fucking dope. He's <laughs> he gives less fucks than Brad Marchand gives fucks. With. He might make one of your Kim Jong Un Batman T-shirts too. Like he's a straight up <laughs> lunatic, Alan Walsh. Hey, but since this, entering this the situation- age, since entering the agent business in 1995, Alan has negotiated over 1.6 billion in over NHL Ooh, overall NHL contracts on behalf you. of his clients. Na 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 money money bags. Na, 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 na. This is just one of those things that's bizarre to me because. I can't imagine an agent who would be willing to tweet something like that without telling his client first off. Now, he put the sword through flurry in the legendary original viral tweet in terms of being stabbed in the back by the <laughs> Vegas organization. Goat tweet. This one's a little different in a sense of like that one, he's completely backing his client. And I understand that's what he's doing here with Huberto, but it puts your client in just a shitty spot. And like... Huberto said, or I don't know if he came out and exactly said, but I think he kind of hinted at the fact that like, I didn't know he was going to tweet this, but it's crazy to me that he would just send it out because all you're doing is causing headaches for your client. So when you ask R.A., is he going to like lose people? I don't think so because if you look at how much money the guy's made his clients, that's all you really care about. But if you're, if you're Huberto and you didn't know about this, which is what it seems like, it's kind of hard to be like, what the, not, not furious at the agent. Like, what are you doing? I'm struggling this year. I'm in my own head, possibly. The coach is in my head. Yeah, I've probably told you that it's a miserable atmosphere around the room with Daryl Sutter being a miserable prick constantly. But I don't need to then answer multiple questions about your tweet when I'm already under fire for my play. So maybe Huberto did know about it. And, and, and that's like, to me, the only explanation, like, yeah, go ahead and send it. But then why even agree to have him do that? Because you still know the implications it's going to cause you on the back end of it. So it definitely got the hockey world talking. And I can't even say that the, that the, the tweet's incorrect either, because Calgary, you look at the, you look at the coach who gets miserable when t- things aren't going well. That's very evident from what we've heard in LA. And when teams are winning, you don't care what the coach is saying because it's so fucking fun to win games. The guys don't give a shit how the coach acts or treats people because you just keep winning. Well, when the losing starts, it's like, all right, well, we're using the same systems. We're doing the same lines and we're still losing. That's where Walsh is saying like, Am I losing my mind or is nothing changing with this team who's vastly underperforming? So I, I don't I don't know what the win out of a tweet like that is. Like what ends up being the best thing that can happen for your client? I don't really know. But it was definitely great to read that come across Twitter. I was like, oh, oh, oh we got a little make segment. The, make, hey, make the Check podcast what's... easier for me. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm like, oh. I, of... I put it up. I put it up there, RA, with the, with the Jack Edwards. Uh, fat shaming Patty Maroon. Like, did I like to see it? No, but I'm. <laughs> if you oh, don't think I'm fucking it, fist pumping when I'm hitting it up in my notes for the next podcast, yeah. I mean, oh, oh, <laughs> Walsh. She's just a. He's a walking. He is pure entertainment. I love the fact that he did this. He's calling out exactly what's going in the locker room for what it is. 
I completely agree with you in that it puts Huberto in the worst possible situation. But at the end of the day, Huberto could afford to build a new arena by himself with the money he's already got from there. So I can't feel that fucking sorry for him. So A plus for Alan Walsh, $1.6 billion in sales. He'll drop his fucking nuts on your forehead. He doesn't give a fuck. I want to see him and Sutter rough and rowdy in Calgary at the fucking Saddle Dome during Stampede. I'll play the undercard with Revo. Give me Walsh versus Daryl. 12 fucking Darryl's rounds. 15 min- Darryl's fucking rounds like it's Rocky Balboa bullshit. You're going you're gonna to have Walsh go up against this yeah. farmer, fucking tough-ass Western Canadian. That one's probably not ending well for Walshy. Although maybe he's like a jujitsu master or something. You- yeah, I feel I like bet. Walsh is crazy. Like, he's the type of guy that'll just take off his shoes before a fight, and you're like, oh, my God, this guy's fucking nuts. He knows he's like a black coke belt. tough. Shows, yeah. shows up with his sword. Yeah. Uh, Biff, right off I the reserve this, tough. The, tw- the tweet kind of tracked, like, what you've been saying, you know, about Daryl. I thought it was pretty much in cahoots what you've been saying all year, basically. Like, you know, the players are fucking not responding to him like they used to. And despite not winning more than three straight this year, a team goes against over three in a safe percentage under 90%. Flames just two points back in Minnesota for the second wild card. So it was uh, inconsistent again. Another team, as they've been, they're, they're right in the thick of it, thanks in large part to Lindholm, to Foley, and Kadri. They've been playing great. So I don't know. We'll see if they get in or not. But it, it's uh, interesting well, how you, Washington you, does you this gotta type feel, of shit. I, I feel bad for Mark Sherman in a sense that I know the guy well. He's a, he's a competitor. He's a gamer. He cares about the craft, and, and, it, and he's a professional, and it's just been a tough go. So you have this guy who's like a possible Vesna winner last year. past few years been outstanding, and you know he just can't find his game. So they're getting along, and they got the chance to get in with really below average goaltending. So if that can somehow flip, if you could somehow get him to find his game, then that's a team nobody wants to play in the first round. And I've been barking it all year, and, and – I hate to re- reveal my sources because I'm a pretty loyal guy. I don't like to say names, but Harvey the Hound. I've been talking to him basically every other day, and he's been tell he he tells me every day is like the day that McTavish ripped out his tongue by the bench. That's how that's what the environment is like, and I'm sure that Walsh is getting his information from the same guy, and it's hell right now. And for another another source told me that there was a, a, a game they were playing against a bottom feeder recently where they ended up coming back. And my understanding was if they – gee, look it up. If they would have lost that game, it was na, 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 na. Walk the plank, Daryl Sutter. What was the team? They almost lost to a bottom feeder where they came back. I think it was in the third period. They beat period. Columbus in overtime. And the reason I know that is because there you Edmonton – Edmonton has fucked me so hard gambling. I had 35 grand on Edmonton the game before when they lost to Columbus, dude. So Columbus crushed me out of 35 what? grand. Then I lost another 10 grand on Edmonton to Detroit last week. And then I had like 15 grand the game after on Calgary in regulation and they won an overtime against Columbus. So Columbus has completely ruined my Barstool bank account. Oh my also, God. I got Calgary in regulation today, and they're losing one nothing to the fucking Flyers right now at home. So maybe a coaching change would be the decision there. I don't ever root for people to lose their jobs. I'm not saying I want it to happen, but if you're tree living, like, I don't know, if you can't make deals and you made these huge deals this summer, maybe the next question is the coach. I mean, I don't fucking know. Mm, get What's going on there? behind the bench. Get the yeah. hound behind yeah. the bench, all exactly. right. This has been on it all year. By the way, Columbus, man, they've been playing their best hockey of the year. If you are betting, keep an eye on them, man. They're, they've been getting some nice prices on the dog. Sorry, what I know it's could have used it last week, but uh, don't, Columbus. Wait, did you hear me. Jack uh, trip? Did you hear Jack uh, Edwards trip the anthem singer before the game today? Oh my God, Todd oh, Angeli. That's nice of him. Yeah, he, well, he, he, a he, muffed a, he, he was coming to sing "Oh Canada." And he, he muffed that he started singing, oh, I'll oh, say, can you see? He laughed. He made a joke about it. And then afterwards, Jack's like, well, hopefully the Bruins have a better start than the anthem singer today. I was like, oh, man, this guy just can't let someone fucking get off the hook. He's kind of love it. I kind of love it. Oh, you, think Biz, you know the anthem singer for the Bruins sings the anthem and then goes upstairs and he's a bartender during the games? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I was aware of that. I don't know if you knew that. So I, I think we can that. give him a pass it's just, here. It's just a classic anthem it out in the move to just go, yeah. just go deal some big deal brewings right after you belt out the anthems. Yeah, like a nice Boston Blue Collar guy. Well, I think he's from Rhode Island. Yeah, Todd Angeli, shout out to him. Uh, what you are just talking about the uh, Edmonton Oilers. How about 
Connor McDavid and Connor Bedard hit 100 points on the same night. Uh, Friday versus the Rangers, McDavid's first period assist gave him his 100th point of the season. Uh, the sixth of his career in eight seasons and the third most by a player before turning 27. Only Wayne and Mario had more. Uh, he's the 16th player with at least six and matched by, I'm sorry, matched the most by an active player. Sid has six in 18 seasons. He's the only player with six as well. Uh, let's see here. 53 seconds after McDavid hit 100, Connor Bedard scored his 50th goal of the season to give him 99 points. He then added an assist to give him fucking 100 points. 100 points in 40 games played. Biz, we mentioned it a few minutes ago. Arizona, are they playing themselves out of the Bedard lottery? Points in nine straight, 49 points in 57 games. Now the sixth fewest points, five teams below them. What are they doing here, Biz? I mean, uh, just going back to that ridiculous stat, 53 seconds Ooh. later that Connor Bedard hits the 100 points. The hockey gods are humming right now, all thanks to my prayer for Patrick Kane. Kind of got redirected there. Must have been a f- Frontier Airline flight. Are the Coyotes playing themselves out of a playoff spot? Yes. No, they were never in a playoff spot. They're unbelievable at the mullet. They dominate the Atlantic. They, I think they, they beat Leafs both times this year. I want to say they beat Boston both mm-hmm. times this year or at least once. once at least, it's yeah. just been a bizarro year for a, a team that's completely overachieving. They're doing so without Chikrin in the lineup too right now. So yeah. when the fuck is he getting the, traded? The, the, Can we drop yeah. the chick? Rent? Like what is? It's been like three years. It feels like. Yeah. What and the they fuck? got a package this guy going? They need to package both goalies and get him the fuck out of here because both of them are playing out of their mind right now. Ingram just uh, he set the record for most saves, forty-seven in a first career shutout. So both goaltenders playing extremely well. Clayton Keller's having a hell of a season, coming back off of a broken femur. Uh, Schmaltzy looks awesome. Uh, Barrett Hayton's starting to come around as well. Michele, you know Michele? The, 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 the Switzerland Italian kid? Michele. I think he's got 25 assists right now, which re- leads all rookies. So they are just playing good hockey. And Bettman was right. Kim Jong Bettman said teams do not tank, and he is absolutely right. The, 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 we should get bonus points for the performance we're putting on in that college rink right now. But, yes, we're playing, our, uh, playing ourselves out of Bedard. Yeah, they pull, pulling a major league. They thought they were going to tank, and the players took a personal. T- uh, back to Connor Ingram. That was great shit, Biz. Uh, he was Tampa's third-round pick uh, back in 2016. He got traded to Nashville, laid away by Nashville. Shut him out. He did give up one in the shootout, but one nothing. Uh, awesome stuff, just if you're a fan of the game. So uh, congrats to Connor Ingram. Uh, and belated congrats to uh, Dallas died Jamie Benn on hitting 1,000 NHL games played uh, versus Anaheim a couple weeks back. Uh, we can't let news like this go down without giving a big shout-out to him. Uh, the 379th player to do so as well. Uh, Whit, any comment on Jamie Benn, 1,000? Uh, just an all-time competitor. Uh, I remember playing against him, and you're just one of those guys where, and it's changed, and it, these players come around less and less the more the game changes, where you got to be on your toes because you don't know if he's going to toe drag her or you don't know if he's going to elbow you in the head. And that's maybe sounds brutal to some people, but as a former player and somebody who loves the game, those are the guys you want on your team. Loved by his teammates. No surprise, he's the captain there, and he's been there that long. Um, and just to play the way he has, that's hard on the body. And you've seen maybe a little bit of a slowdown um, in his career lately. But when you play that hard, it's tough to play this long. So even getting a thousand games, I mean, one thing that jumps out to mind to me is when he squared off with Joe Thornton, just two studs. Thornton always played like that. Dirty, mean, but also just produce points. Um, Jamie Benn, I believe he led the league in scoring one year. It's been an incredible career for a guy who I think just makes it miserable to play against him. And if you're looking at GMs and coaches around the league, those are the guys they want. And they want those guys even without the the offense and the game-breaking abilities that he's had for such a long time. So, I mean, you'll look back as a Dallas Stars fan, and, and he'll come to mind right away as an all-time great for that team. And I think he's had a hell of a season as well this year, bouncing back. And listen, if you're if you're the if you're the player and have had the career and have the resume that he has, to get called out with Sagan by the owner, whoever that was, a few years ago, that's not easy to handle for anyone, let alone a guy who's accomplished what Jamie Ben has. So you just see a lot of pride, and you see a guy who just goes to the rink every single day and. There's 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 an easy explanation to us describing these guys who get to a thousand games because they 
they all have a lot of the same characteristics and Jamie Ben's no different so I hated playing against him and I would have loved having him as a teammate so that's that's pretty easy explanation as to why this guy's been this good for this long yeah, and the it. first guy in uh, great breakdown, and the first guy in NHL history to hit a thousand games who doesn't eat pussy. It's like it's crazy <laughs> yep. to think yep. about, but yep. I mean, yeah. just an, I mean, summer, probably yeah. the second most famous person on the planet who has let it be known that he doesn't muck barn. DJ Khaled and Jamie Ben. So congrats on a thousand <laughs> games. He's a legend. His teammates love him. He's got unreal salad still too. You think with the stress of the game, maybe that thing would recede a little bit, but. He's got the tats and the slick back. Just a fucking – no wonder he doesn't got to eat pussy. He looks like a man rocket. Yeah, exactly. Get down there. Don't be a pussy. Uh, Biz, L.A. extended defenseman Mikey Anderson with an eight-year, $33 million deal with the 4.125 AAV. He's got a modified no-trade clause for the last five. 23-year-old was L.A.'s fourth-round pick in 2017. What do you make of this deal, Biz? We talked about how underrated that L.A. decor was. Uh, uh, Matty Roy – uh, they got that Dursey kid who can buzz offensively. They got Dowdy, and they got this Mikey Anderson. He's a a, a pretty steady defenseman, uh, really good in his own end. He plays with an edge, a lot of hip checks. He, he throws some fucking massive hits, and a guy who's really not talked about uh, probably in, uh, enough because he's playing at 10.30 Eastern time every night. So I think that overall – with where the market's going and everything, he might have left a little bit on the table. A very conservative deal for both sides, but uh, I don't. I guess he didn't want to gamble on himself, but he gets to stick around L.A. and play with a good team and 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 well deserved, man. That's a that's a large large commitment for for a, a number four defenseman. With I, I think it's an amazing move by Rob Blake, and it's very similar to the deal for Samuelson in Buffalo in terms of okay we kind of have the ability to lock this guy up where a player like this can't say no to 33 million bucks, right? That yeah. that's that changes your life. You're set for life and we're also getting a deal because he's probably going to be worth more than that. So it's a win-win because this kid has financial security for the rest of his life if he's smart. And it's almost a bigger win for the team to lock a guy up for that long at a very reasonable rate. So LA, King, LA Kings fans know how good and valuable this guy is. I believe he dominated at Minnesota Duluth Grinelli. Was that the school he was at? Um, I, I thought he, yeah, was, he was there. So a college, yeah, so a college guy. Won who, a couple national championships, <laughs> I believe, there as well. <laughs> Yeah, so he knows what it takes to win. Obviously, college is different than winning, you know, four rounds in the playoffs. But to lock, to, it's just those are the type of guys who don't really want to risk injury or, or playing time or just not not developing as you should. It's like thirty three million bucks or whatever it turned out to be. Yeah, look, give me the dotted line right now. And Rob Blake sits around and says, "Dude, we just locked up a top four D man yeah. for eight years at a great deal." So that 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 that's Unreal what you see deal. the the league turning to now is is identifying your talent that you know can play at a high level and let's lock them in for a long time to just give them the option. Hey, this is how much money we're willing to give you right now. Dare say no. Those are the nice ones too. When maybe you aren't playing the best, you're not the you're not the top of the headlines either because you're only making four million bucks. All of a sudden, you're a, you're a defenseman like that making six. Well, uh, you're easy to pick out of a crowd. So, uh, like you said, I I don't think he could have played him played himself up to around six million. I don't think there's enough offense in his game for that. But uh, definitely, you can't say no to eight years, thirty three million bucks. Fuck You'd be no. a buffoon. Great breakdown, fellas. Uh, boys, uh, the Quebec Pee Wee Tournament just wrapped up the other day. Our boy Colby Armstrong was up there with his son's team. We had a nice chat with him, so we're going to send it over to the Arm Dog right now of Chicklets Game Notes, so enjoy the Quebec Pee Wee talk. This interview is brought to you by Sport Clips. Consider this. Not every hairstylist is created equal. Many stylists don't have much experience cutting men's hair, but you don't know it until it's too late. At Sport Clips, all stylists undergo specialized training specifically in how to cut and style men's hair, making them not just stylists, but scissor-cutting scholars and fade fanatics. And whether you're getting a fade, a feather, or a faux hawk, Sport Clips takes care of all these guys out there, especially guys like me, weird-shaped heads. I'm bald, but I still got to get it taken down once in a while. They take it down the nub perfect, shave the back of the neck. It's unbelievable. After all, it's not just any average haircut. This is the big league we're talking about, and these are haircutting professionals. So don't hand your bushy old noggin or your bald old noggin to anyone with a pair of clippers. You want to go to Sport Clips because Sport Clips takes men's haircutting to another level, which is why they truly are the pros in men's hair. 
If you're looking for that haircut, guys, Sport Clips, there's one near you. Check it out. They're the best at cutting men's hair. All right, now it's time to bring on our buddy, co-host of Chicklets Game Notes. Just got off a 75-hour bus ride from Quebec at the Pee Wee Tournament. Colby Armstrong, what's going on, buddy? What happened this weekend? Holy shit, boys. Wit was everything you brought. How long about. have you been? There? How long were you there, bro? I feel like you okay. went there six last months. Month. He's yeah, six months. He's French now. <laughs> Bonjour, uh, gentlemen. Uh, he had to give up his U.S. citizenship. That's how long he was there. <laughs> yeah, they're after me when I cross. They're the like, border. you've consumed too much Tim Horton, sir. You cannot come across the border. <laughs> he's, too he's much the poutine. quickest citizen of all time. <laughs> yeah, too much poutine, boys. It was it poutine was t- on your donor list on your li- your driver's license. <laughs> gravy, just straight gravy, cheese curds all over the place. Uh, it was, it was 10 days. It was 10 days, oh boys. God. Like, I don't know what, did you do that with 10 days is just insane. Yeah, we were there. Well, we were, we were there for, well, you I won think the it thing. ended up being like around two weeks, but you guys got there and didn't have a game for what, four or five days or was there exhibition games before the tourney? So, you know, this, they have like random pickup games. So we played a game against like pickup game, like the next day against, uh, LA junior Kings, but their equipment didn't show up because the tournament apparently is supposed to bring it. So this other team was playing. So it was actually kind of cool. Our team, the, they got to play against a Swiss team, which was sweet for one period. Then the LA Junior Kings equipment came. We've played them a few times. So we were like, I'm like, why are we playing these guys? We play them all the time. Yeah. It's way cooler to play Swiss. That was mm-hmm. sick. So the Swiss team hung around, played us for a period. Their gear got here. We finished the game against the LA Junior Kings. Uh, and then it was Carnival. With, and you know that. Mer- Merle's gave us oh. the blog on that. This this is like you're in a movie, boys. You got to go to this. It's absolutely electric. The ice sculpture. We we need to beautiful. go. We need to go, boys, to the Quebec Pee Wee tournament. Chicklets crew. I think it would be an unbelievable experience of culture and hockey and Quebec City and uh, winter and all the things that you can take in. But you, everyone was talking about you guys. I think everyone. I think you're gonna dive in, into it more on Chicklets game notes. The reason I wanted to get you on today was to maybe get the Coles notes or what do you guys call them in the states Clip again? Notes. I always forget. The cliff notes. I do the cliff um, notes. But yeah, like we, I mean, we've talked about this pe- yeah. two weeks. I know, but it just doesn't click in my fucking brain, all right? Um, but Witt's been talking about this forever, about how he ended up winning it with the North Shore Kings, right? The pe- the, and this South is like we're, 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 we're Oh, pe- my God. Shore. I wasn't a North Shore. South Shore. Oh, who need- <laughs> yeah, he just said South North Shore. Shore. That's like you're Fuck. playing with tire irons. <laughs> I love that busy. Oh, <laughs> the, new, the, the new name is the I'd North Shore Kings right now. The North Shore Kings. <laughs> but but Wit got to experience this, where these Pee Wee hockey players basically get to experience the National Hockey League, where every game's packed, all the locals are coming out. You mentioned it's Carnival, so really take us from the beginning with this crazy bus ride in order to get there. How amped up the kids were to go play in this. Yeah. I know there was a little bit of a delay till you guys finally got into the action, but like. When you were texting us the the ultimate result, and we'll get to that, it just brought me back to playing minor hockey. No, buddy, I got goosebumps talking right now yeah. about just the competitiveness and not only to like see your kid get to experience that, but like how it was to experience as a father and like seeing your kid go through something like that. Well, I for, yeah, I, I, it was it, it's it's unbelievable, and and I didn't get to play in anything like that, Biz. I don't know if you did me either. I, so for me, going to this, it's all I've heard, like obviously Witt and Merles. I played with other guys and Weeksy, uh, you know, off ESPN and NHL Network. He, I, I talked to him a while ago, like a month and a half ago, and I told him this is our year we're going. He's like, oh, my God, buddy, it's the best thing I've ever done in my life. Like, you're going to love it. Like, like So lit- coming literally. from guys that, yeah, c- coming from guys that played in the NHL and like playoffs and chasing Stanley Cups and doing all these amazing things in your life and still drawing back to your you know, when you were 12 years old at this like insane tournament, I, I was like, yeah, OK, guys. And I always said that you guys always talked about it with like playing pro with guys that played there and talked about it. Like it was like the greatest thing on earth. I'm like, how good could this be? But being there, I'm not built for the bus anymore, though, boys. Bus <laughs> down. We drove all through the night. We got in our hotel rooms weren't ready because oh, we got nice. in at like seven in the morning and we couldn't check in our hotel rooms till four. So, of course, oh. what do you do? You wheel around Quebec. That, that could have been maybe thought of before. Well, bring the kids to the strip club. 
Yeah, it was bad. Bring the kids yeah. to the strip club. Get, yeah, kill the whole time. Tough plan- get them the buffet. Tough planning by the Pittsburgh Junior Pens. Like, what hotel yeah. can you get in at 7 a.m.? No, I know. But Army, it's just, perfect my opportunity first to t- teach your kids about adversity, right? Going yeah. in, yeah, the hotel yeah. rooms aren't ready, whatever, man. You got to battle But, buddy, what it. do they do? It's unbelievable. You walk out of our hotel room down the main drag in Quebec, all the way down to old Quebec. Right in between there, there's an outdoor rink set up. And so it's just like kids from all different teams from all over. There's 120 teams there from wow. 16 different countries. And the rink is just rammed. It was awesome. It was, it was like amazing. There's ice bars outside. I'm drinking uh, I'm drinking maple whiskey. Everyone's drinking this uh, like hot wine. I'm drinking hot toddies. I got the cane behind me right here that Merle's told me to get. I'm wheeling around with this walking cane. You pop the top off and drink it. It was like, it was like the first four days we didn't really have much going on and it was carnival. So it was like, just get on your winter gear and like that city doesn't stop. They don't even care about snow. They don't shovel it. It's just like always <laughs> snowing. It's just insane. Like you're in a movie. And for our American listeners uh, listening right now, uh, the drinking age in Quebec is actually 10. That's yeah. the start. So like, I'm sure the kids were getting after it too, right? <laughs> oh yeah, the kids were just getting hammered, just sloshed. <laughs> I was like, this is a Caesar. This is what we drink in Canada too. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, it, it was... It was awesome, and we hadn't even got to like Videotron yet. With like to well, you would have played. Okay, so that's kind of what I wanted to ask you. Now, at the time when I was playing, it was still called Le Colisse. I, I think that was yeah. the name of it when the Nordiques were there. Um, you know, obviously with sponsorships, it's changed. Now it's the Videotron. Now our first, I know, Biz, you love sponsors. You don't like commercials. Ooh, so we, I remember before the first game at, at Le Colisse. There are some big time nerves, not only because you've been waiting since you're like nine or 10 and like dreaming of playing in this tournament, but also the fact you get on the ice. I mean, there's pretty much always at least like seven grand there. The final semifinals are packed, but I just remember getting on the ice. You're in an NHL size arena. You're like, holy shit, there's like fans here. So were the kids a little maybe too pumped up, kids nervous? How was that? I think our kids were really nervous. I don't think they knew what to expect, but like we don't play on rinks yeah. like that. You're 12. You play in like the shit box rink with like, you know, steel bleachers that give you hemorrhoids, you know, like, <laughs> and there's like, you know, oh, 30. Yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. trying to get us a couple ads for preparation <laughs> H ads, on here yeah, for fuck's sakes. We need some hemorrhoid ads for hockey dads. Shitty out there. Cindy's us, spokeswoman. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. She needed a different cream. So the uh, the atmosphere, though, boys, was like to, to get that. And that's the first game you play. The first game you play, everyone gets a game in the Videotron Arena where the Quebec Ramparts play. Uh, Patrick Waugh and his uh, Q, Q team, which I think is doing really good this year. They're either one or two in the country ranked right now. Um, uh, but but we had a kid, uh, self-admittedly, said he threw up before the game. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Josh Allen, so special. fired up. Yeah, so he was nervous. so nervous. Like, you ever get that feeling in your stomach? You know, can you imagine though? Like, I was saying this the whole thing, and I was seeing it through their eyes, going through our our lives in hockey, right? And like, what that would be like at that age to to be around, and like, there's teams all watching you. You're in the big rank. The jumbotrons on. They're announcing names. It's in Quebec. They play the Quebec song. They're showing replays. Repl- oh, buddy, it's like electric. <laughs> It's insane. I was nervous. I was nervous. I was like five drink minimum each game. And I had a horn. I was like the horn dad because we (laughs) was getting all horned up busy, as you say. You were the you were the cowbell lady (laughs) from the the Rangers going into PNC Arena in Carolina. Christ's sake, Army can't be the horn guy. I was the horn guy. You know what I usually do? I usually sit quietly and and another dad and ours. We we do the games on YouTube so all our grandparents and family members can watch. But there you weren't allowed because they have like a streaming service that you have. They like scam you into buying so like you can only watch on this like streaming service um so we couldn't do that so and then until we went to the other rink then we could do it then we did it it was sick. back up back up <laughs> you, you do you do play by play for all the family members on these uh Wee no we have games? a dad on our team jeremy evans shout out to him he does it and he's done every game this year and he's actually sick like he's really good at it and i do color i do color for 12 year old <laughs> hockey that's where i get my practice the Bruins with. need a guy for play by play called jeremy same initial as jack <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah, exactly. And 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 I do the color, so that's where I get all my that's where I get warmed up busy. So when I come on the TNT between the benches here and there, Ooh, yeah. That's where I get her from. Pee wee hockey baby, but it was it was insane. The first game was just insane. We actually played the Boston Junior Eagles and they beat us two nothing. And our guys looked nervous. Big time they program. looked real nervous. 
Yeah, big time. Their kids are huge. I mean, their kids are like look like they're 15. You you met one of my buddies up there, right, Cole? Yeah, oh yeah. So anyways, yeah, that too. I met RA's buddy, super good dude, came up to me, introduced himself as RA's buddy, which I was like, that's kind of suspect. Try to, to do sell it. you a dime bag. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Check your wallet. <laughs> yeah. But I was you like, had okay. Crack yeah. from Quebec. <laughs> <laughs> they call it lay crack. <laughs> <laughs> like crackle, <laughs> like the colise. It's the crackle. <laughs> Heisenberg shit. That's so funny. His buddy was awesome though, and like all the parents too. Like Nathan Page was coaching a Rochester team there as well. Um, There's some other NHL guys kicking around. We lost in the semifinals eventually. That's kind of leading up to the end uh, to Ryan Kessler. So who, once who you, you guys lose. It, it's 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 kind of a, an interesting way they do it. If you're going to lose, it's got to be that first game because then all the losers go into that yep. bracket. And yep. then if you win out that bracket, you play the teams who haven't lost at all from the beginning in the final, correct? Yep. Yep. So it's everyone's listed down the middle, all paired off. And then you lose, you go this way of the bracket. You win, you go to this side. And then you can't lose again. you got to run the table all the way through. And then the two winners meet at the end. So we were, we were on the loser side, lost to Boston Junior Eagles, and then beat a couple really good teams to keep moving and pushing forward. A team that we'd never beat before, the Brantford 99ers. Busy you ever played against those guys? Oh, no, I never played against the Wayne Gretzky, Wayne. the 99ers. Thought, hey, that's what, that was their apology to kicking him out of minor hockey. Yeah. They gave him his whole, his own minor hockey association. It's an Oilers <laughs> logo too, with like 99ers no sh- on the inside. Yeah, it's sick. So you know they were just loaded, and you guys ended up pulling it off and going all the way to the semifinals. Yeah, yeah. We met up against Kessler's team, the Caesars, which went there as the Detroit Red Wings. So it was they looked sick. So when we played them, it was like the Penguins against the Red Wings, like 08, 09 Cup Finals. Wow, all over again. It was and you know fucking awesome. Kessler shooting his kids in the arse with testosterone. <laughs> he's a, he seems like he's a little bit tapped on the minor hockey league stuff. Oh, he was loves he, it. Was he, he behind the bench? Oh yeah, he's all in, and they had these big red winter coats. Like it was like it was like the Hawks from uh, like uh, Mighty yeah, Ducks. You Mighty remember Ducks. that? Like, yeah, they were like the did Hawks. Did they take kinda. it down? Did they take down the finals? No, this Czech team did. Which, wow. with, I don't Check know. The you passports. Can t- yeah, Check the tell passports. me this too. Like I, I'm down. Okay, I should save this for game notes. But no, no, no. At least need, we at least need to hear what you're going to say. Yeah, you can go I'm more. Down down give us the go with, notes. I'm down if you go with your team that you played with all year. But I get the feeling that this like was a Czech national 12 year old team, like where they just got all the best Czech kids, which is like, okay, whatever. But you know, there was a couple other teams in there that were like that too. And they were sick. And yeah, the Czechs went all the way. They won. They were like, isn't that Chara? Yeah. What the fuck is he doing out there? (laughs) (laughs) He's he's fucking so dead. Fuck. (laughs) I thought Hayduke retired years ago. What the hell? Yeah, yeah, hang up, yeah. We're like, uh, they're like, and ladies and gentlemen, he's still playing. Yaramir Yager. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> like, why is so, a 60 year old dog? Was, was it just, uh, it had to be kind of a lot of tears right after. Oh, I mean, they're man. so close to going to the championship game. You just feel so bad for the kids. And we, we hadn't played them this year, but we played them last year. And they're a good team. They're a really good team. Good kids, too. And after the game, yeah, they came out. The boys were devastated. You know, it, so this, this is the game, too. Zero zero all game. Probably wow. the greatest zero zero game I've ever seen. Edge of my seat, chances both ways, penalties here and there, like you know, all these opportunities, a breakaway, a big save. And uh yeah, then it goes to OT and they they shot, rebound, kid dunks it in. And it was just like one of those things. And it just like, oh, just ripped our team's heart out. Our kids were crying. Like they gave everything they had. It was probably the best hockey they played all year, too, which was like but that that whole experience of like rising to the occasion on that stage yeah. in that place with all these kids and teams there it was insane i didn't even get to the pin trading what we couldn't find your pin i tried to snoop around for your pin the pin trading is like wherever wherever ra's from like after 11 o'clock at night on the corner it is just electric factory <laughs> Oh, a lot of a lot of hey, bartering so, for the pins. Oh my God, they have like old dudes with tables set up, and the kids go up to them like, "Can I get one of those pins?" And the like, there's like old French guys there, you know. They're like, 
no, I already have that one. Like they're like, they're like, they're like scamming like 12 year olds for like pins that they don't have. They collect all these pins. They have pins pin from like, <laughs> they have pins from like the nineties and eighties and stuff. It's crazy. But these, these kids, kids are like taking their mom all. Gucci's purse, Gucci <laughs> purses to trade up for a fucking silver stick pen. Oh yeah, pen, they're trying me. to, they're trying to, we were trying to look for Wits pin. I wanted to have it for the boys. Yeah, it turns like, out I never even sick. played in the tournament. I made it all up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't find it. Yeah, that's true. There's no proof. <laughs> Did the kids get a chance to spend a day at the, uh, at the snow park? Oh my God. I had to do it. That's I, my. That's like the best part about there. The snow. You get like eight kids in a snow tube. It's like a. All right, ski calm down. I, th I don't think that's what you think it is, Army. What is it, <laughs> buddy? You go to a snow park. It's like in, oh. in America. It's like uh, like a water slide park, you know. But it's like so much snow there oh. that they do these snow parks, and there's like a million runs. You think you have to like? I, I in my mind. I got all my kids there. Hey, so I'm like going to go daddy domination. I got to drag all their shit up the hill. You know, I'm pulling. I'm thinking I'm going to have a heart attack. This is going to be a grind. No, they have these like little tubes that whip around on these little things. You sit on it like a toilet. You just flop into this thing and then it pulls you up the hill all the way up to the top. And then you get on another one. You go up higher and then oh, there's shit. like rafts and twister runs and you could get like eight people in one and or you can go down on your own one. <laughs> It is fucking insane. And then you just like walk back and sit on this tube and it pulls you back up. You don't have to work at all. It's unbelievable. It so was as a parent, it sounds like the type of place where you don't have to like uh, uh, argue with your kid to get to bed at 10 because everybody's just so uh, gassed from all these festivities and games all day long. So 100%. it sounds like a parent's dream. It is. It is. And even more so because we did it the right way. Our kids billeted. Wit, you, you might know about, did you billet? Oh, I billeted, I billeted and the kid I billeted with, I'm not going to say his name, after one night <laughs> and left. So I, my dad goes, you're not leaving. So yeah. I stayed with that French family by myself for a week. What a legend. <laughs> that's, that's so huge. We were worried about our kids if they were going to be able to withstand it and hold up. None of our kids bailed. Not one. Everyone I stuck it out. Awesome. Everyone loved it. But think of this, Busy. That's why. So the kids, at certain time, the bill just take them. So then from like four at night, in the afternoon or whatever, whenever you're done all your things for the day, they go to the billet. So then it's just like random dads, some moms. I had my whole family there, but they just rip Quebec apart. Just a gong yeah. show. We went to this one place every night. Everyone went there. It was just insane. So drinking with the I, I say billet if you're going to it, billet, because then you can just do like awesome parent stuff too and 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 really enjoy Quebec City. All right. AKA All right. What do you think? Get wrecked. What do you think yeah, the AKA ultimate dream? What do you think the ultimate dream is when you ended up going to a billet family? For for uh, for a young kid doing this in minor hockey. Um, I mean, the, they I, have I a would sham say marriage it involves in, a, they have an, an open marriage of female your age. Yeah, dad doesn't <laughs> they, care what they, goes on, and, and mom gives you the. I did it one time. One tea time with Mrs. Port, What's that? No, you asked me a question. What was it? Tea with Mrs. What's her name? And young blood. <laughs> McGill. Miss McGill. I don't know. It was Ms. taking McGill, you too yeah. long to spit it out, so I hopped in. I ended up going to Port Huron. And uh, we played there. Silver were sticks. Were you upset that I said that? I'm sorry. All right. No, I no, no. no I'm just. I'm fucking. I got a text. That I got to read to Colby. Go ahead, buddy. Okay. Uh, but it was in Port Huron, and I got the billet family, and there's an absolute missile two years older than us. It was three of us guys staying in the house. It was an, oh my. You you. I'd never seen tits that big in my life. <laughs> And it might have been the first time I got a boner. So the <laughs> ultimate billet experience here for the one time I ever did it before getting to junior, obviously. Yeah, 12 years old. There you go, busy. I got to give a shout out to John Dussault. Johnny Dussault, the head billet guy for our team, the Penguins. He's like a legend in Quebec. And he's been doing it for like, I don't even know how long, like 40 years. 40 years. Wow. So my son stayed at his place. Legend. All right. You're going to read that text? Yeah, my, my buddy Jay Murphy, who, who uh, Colby ran into, he sent me a text last night. He just want, he said, tell Colby, thanks again for the picture, and well done on a great show in Quebec. He raved about it. He even said to me, he knows I don't have kids. Like, you what did he say? Time. Was he awesome just saying time. the same stuff as me, R.A.? Like, Rave, raving about it. Like, and you, you don't know. Like, you, you stay in there. Yeah. You know if you're going to be there one day. That That's kind of a weird question. But when you book the hotel, is there like a special stipulation? Like, you know, we got to stay another night. Do they have that kind of in there? So if you got to leave, you're not getting charged for extra nights. How's that? Well, work? I don't know how that worked because <laughs> I didn't really check into it. And thankfully, it <laughs> went too drunk. pretty far. But th this is the first you've year. You've never two checked boys your American they... Express statement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just destroyed, though. I'll tell you that much. I uh, This is the first year they had girls, a girls uh, category. So they had uh, Pee Wee girls at the Quebec Pee Wee tournament for the first year ever. So their pins were hot topic because it, like, <clears throat> it was like history, right? So... 
Um, but we had a couple girls. We had a girls team from England at our hotel. Now, they didn't make it. They, they lost out early. The boys team, I think, in their division went pretty far. But they, <clears throat> because they're from England, like you come and book the trip and stay the entire time. So one of their trainers, yeah. though, for the girls team at the hotel came and asked her to get a picture. I, I thought this was kind of cool. Like, think she, like she was a chicklets fan, which is like, I'm like, damn, England, dude, that's sick. So I got a Biz, lot of shit. Biz, how long ago did you play in England? Yeah. yeah. Some how kids many, running around. Oh, like, uh, uh, she's uh, older. I went over she was there a trainer. She was like an athletic trainer. So, um, yeah. I don't know. I have to. When I went over it there, was all blur. it was all blur because it's a big drinking culture. But I, I was there for, I think, 20 games. I think I had 1,000 points. And yeah, Sydney, Co- <laughs> Sydney Crosby of Cardiff. Um, <laughs> now, Army, I think you're going to go a little bit more into yeah. maybe different stories when you end up doing Chicklets game notes next. Yeah. I wanted to get you on, obviously, because that's a pretty cool experience and it's good for people to hear it, uh, especially the parents out there that have kids who play. Uh, the one last thing I want to ask you about before you go is what the fuck is going on with the Penguins? I know. Hey, what's There's going Jari, on, man? Jari, uh, Jari's back, will be back. Jari will be back. Yeah. So he will see how he, he gets going. I, I, I mean, that's been massive for them, but there's been a big push, I think, with the media here too, with the team, for like a shakeup of some kind of energy in 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 the lineup. And it's mostly like the bottom six guys, right? Like, you know, how are how are they going to insert? And remember, remember Tanev, like how good he, you know, he's like yes. a ball energy type of player. Like that's the kind of guys that they kind of need, I think, through the bottom depths of their lineup. So, um, Top six is getting it done. I think, you know, you see what Latang can do when he's playing. And then they've missed Jari, though, for an extended period of time, which has really stung him. So the Islanders are all banged up, though. Islanders are banged up, but there's like seven teams within five points of each I know, other. Because in those now wild Detroit, I got Detroit going. Uh, uh, but I hope ten, the Penguins can turn them. it around, crank it up, up to the trade deadline uh, here I've in been- the next few weeks. I've been following it online, and, and the fan base gets nasty on there towards Sullivan. And and right now, it seems that more of the brunt is going on Ronnie Textall because yep. they, they want him to make some sort of move. Sullivan keeps getting the same question from the media night in, night out. He's They're basically like, what's up with the third line? The third line's costing them games. Yeah. But yeah. he's been pretty diplomatic about it. What do you make of the third line? I just and, think and like, that line, I think that line doesn't have, and, and you guys, they don't, they don't really have an identity. You know, like you, you would hope you would have like a, either a checking line or like an energy type of uh, uh, of of personality on that line. Uh, I don't think Jeff Carter's game is where it is, you know, where it was even last year. Um, and then Ka- you either have Kapanen or Heinen. They've tried. They've got McGinn on the other side uh, of of Carter, and that's kind of been it. It's kind of it's kind of just been floundering all year long with with you know, a lack of production or a lack of really anything provided to the lineup as far as energy or personality, which I think they need. They need that in their Buddy, lineup. So the fucking energy aspect earlier in the year, we had a game on TNT with Washington. It was Sid mixing it up, trying to get the guys emotionally yep. invested. Even as of, as of late, there was two examples of it. The game against LA where he ended up getting the 10 and thrown out for the first time. We can maybe get your opinion on that. <laughs> and, the, and I believe it was either the game before or the game after in Anaheim and, and went after Zegras. I'm thinking to myself, why is it fucking Crosby who's always. also been... Always. If you're a bottom six guy there, I want to grab Kappen and I want to shake his fucking <laughs> head and say, start mixing it up. Add something to your game. Yeah, like you'll but, score three goals and then you'll disappear for three weeks. F- yeah. Do something on the nights you're not providing offense. Mm-hmm. There's no identity on the bottom six. Why am I getting so fired up about this? Because I'm a Leafs fan. I don't know. <laughs> but just seeing Sid have to do that as a bottom six guy my entire career, it aggravates the fuck out of me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it drives me nuts too. See, that's like Sid, Gino, or Tanger are the guys that are like providing the passion and emotion more often than not. I got to give Zucker his props. He's been a little quiet yeah. as of late and maybe – Maybe banged up a little bit. I'm not sure, but he's played like an awesome style of hockey this year, which has been huge for the Penguins. Uh, having that kind of like guy in your lineup, he's not a huge guy. He gets to all the hard areas. He plays physical. He's been he's been really good. So they need a little bit more of that. You're right. And this is what gets me, boys. I lo- I always say this. I'm like, how are you not in the minors sitting there as like if you're 22 and you're like, I never get a break. Oh God. And just waiting for my, how do you not look at the lineup and be like, oh, what do they need? Okay, what can I be? Can I do this? Well, yeah, then go bang your fucking head against the wall and get out there and give her. Like, how do you not Jump want Jump on the that? other team's bench to get noticed. Do whatever yeah, you got to like, do. How do you not want to do this to make, instead of making, you know, 80 grand a year, you could be making, you know, write your own ticket for a couple mil 
times three and be that guy. I don't know. I don't know. Like they just don't. I don't know if that's just the game now. Maybe or they like is, riding but, the bus, Army. Maybe they. Yeah. Maybe unlike you, they like riding the bus. Unlike me, I got a text from Pager too coming back. So I sent a tweet out. I'm like still going on the bus. Like I sent this tweet just complaining, and he's like, "Bad luck, Western Hockey League guy complaining about riding the bus." <laughs> yeah. What was it? Uh, Fifteen hours? Um, yeah, brutal. Fifteen hour bus ride. Holy you guys shit. were like Christopher Columbus in the Western League. Like no. out to see you get half of you would get scurvy during the season. Not enough vitamin C. Is that something for that? <laughs> oh, buddy, it was bad. It's is scurvy grind. when you don't have enough vi vitamin C? Yeah, it's, yeah. They yeah. Uh, oh, used to get it back in the day. Oh, yeah, they used to get All a right, lot of things. All right, got me scurvy. <laughs> well, that was my trip, boys. Uh, Everyone should uh, come uh, to, uh, to Game Notes, and uh, me and Merles will pour over it, though, and we're, it's we'll... When is that coming out? Well, next week, right? Uh, well, I right should know. Week. You're the fucking host of it. And <laughs> number two, though, you guys have been doing an awesome job. Uh, Merle's ended up coming on that all-star trip. He was doing the man oh, on the street stuff. I know. He's he's a great Swiss Army knife. So just congratulations so on everything, and thank you for all the help. And you guys have been crushing it. So anyone listening, go check out Chicklet's Game Notes. Uh, they had a little bit of a different flavor because they actually got their pee-pee wet, and uh, they have some kids floating around playing hockey. <laughs> yeah it's been pretty fun thanks busy boys thanks for everything and i'll tell you this the love the community walking around quebec at the peewee tournament getting recognized uh for being a part of you guys and and how much everyone listens like you guys are hockey dad lifesavers uh week to week everyone's tuning in you know you know your buddy ra is he was taught you know, obviously he knows you guys but everyone listens it's it was it was so cool to kind of just like wave to the people i was taking pictures some guys off the ramparts came down and out of their suite they came down because they're there watching they're like oh man we gotta get Did a you picture and Mel get a few free lap dances because of it in quebec <laughs> oh yeah we got a few pink whitney lap dances in quebec city <laughs> uh, on the house thanks boys that was good of you guys thank you're, you you're Fifth welcome. kids you're on welcome. the way yeah <laughs> <laughs> they smell so hey, good. Dog, That's hey, His name will be Mathieu. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to the uh, Boston All right, Army, Junior Eagles. Great too. talking to you, buddy. Thanks for joining the show, and that's an awesome story for the kids. So Chicklet's Game Notes will go I into the games a little bit more and, and, and the trip, but we appreciate you, buddy. All right, boys. Thanks for having me. Before we go any further, here's a word from our friends at the Boston Sportsbook. What's going on, gang? I'm not sure if you checked out the Barstool Sportsbook yet, but you ought to if it's in your area. There are tons of great ways to play, including our Barstool exclusives. Their picks and parlays from Big Cat, El Prez, and other personalities to follow or fade. We have tons of ways to bet. You get your daily odds boost. You get your live in-game bets, same-game parlays, move the line, teases, all that fancy stuff. And again, a parlay bet within the same game or cross sports. Not everybody does it, but we do here at the Barstool Sportsbook. It's also very easy to navigate and use data and content to keep you informed. It's easy and secure registration, and there are more ways to deposit and withdraw. Download it today and use the code BizNasty to create an account. It's a $1,000 new player bonus. If your first bet loses, you get up to $1,000 in bonus cash. You must be 21 or older. Gambler problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Big thanks to our buddy Ami making some time for us. You know, he's been very busy lately. But that tournament, would, I, honestly, I think we, I mean, I know we got a lot of shit going on, but that's a tournament we should try to get up to some year, man. Not the whole, like, two weeks or whatever it is, but it sounds like a hell of a take. Get some skiing in up in that neck of the woods. I'm down for it. Just get little pink Whitney, little boy, boy, child size checklist. pink Whitney for the kids. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, shit. All right. Uh, Logistically, the it probably makes more sense than going to uh, Spangler Cup. So maybe we could do that first. I think that the Chicklets Game Notes crew, and I don't know if we can announce this yet, they're going down to the NCAA final in Tampa. So we're going to have boot we can't We can't announce that. We will be down okay. there. Okay. Boots on the ground. So Beat that's that. another fun thing about having Army and Merles on board now is we can cover more stuff. I read a stat recently, too, on Instagram, so I don't know if it's true, but they say uh, college hockey, uh, its viewership and people following it is up like 50% in the last like six, seven years, which is, I mean, that's, and then you're seeing more NHLers come out of the NCAA too. I mean, that's what the happens when level. you start to add these big schools like Penn State, Arizona State, they have alumni, they have just giant student fan bases that can can promote the game and and me and Merle's actually when we were in Arizona we did a tour of the mullet arena from the ASU players standpoint Josh Doan gave us a tour he took us in the gym he showed us like all the, the amazing facilities they had Merle's even went head-to-head -head with their best bubble hockey player so that video will be coming out in like a week or two 
Yeah, that, uh, Merles was telling me that fucker Josh Doan was chirping me. He said when uh, his dad would bring him out of the locker room, he goes, I want you to look at every player. And you see that guy right there, and he pointed at me. He goes, do the complete opposite of whatever he does. <laughs> Confirmed. Yeah, Confirmed he did. <laughs> and and then we went out to eat at Maggiano's one time, and, and I don't know if his kids had the day off school, so he brought them by where we'd have our pregame meal spot, and I would usually be the last one because I would get bag skated after all our practices, so I'd be eating the last half of my meal by myself. Meal by myself. So donor brought the kids in, and then I, I ended up signing my check and going before they did, and like all of them looked at him being like, Dad, like how come when we eat like that you call us out for manners at the table? And he's like, yeah, that's that's just biz, guys. That's a he, he's a lost cause that one. So when is that uh, going to be coming out on the YouTube channel? That should be coming out the next week or two. It's really cool too, man. Like we met the strength and conditioning coach. We met a bunch of the boys. We actually to do the video, we had to, we pulled Donor off the ice, and he missed the sprints at the end of practice. So oh. the boys were pissed at us. So it's and we got it all on camera too. So it's a, it's a it's a really cool video. Uh oh. Um. Last thing, I, know, I think I already plugged it earlier on, the Spit and Chicklets YouTube. We got some awesome stuff about to come out. We just did the vlog behind the scenes of the All-Star where we interviewed, uh, uh, you know, we got uh, Stevenson here, we got Darlene. Uh, what's the next thing? You just mentioned that coming out around March 15th. I don't know if that's the exact date, but the Fiala and Pasta Sandbagger will be dropping. So I don't know if it, give or take a couple days, but that one is brought to you by, I believe, G4, Labatt Blue, Labatt, Labatt Blue Light, Pink Whitney. And was there another one? Nope, was that's it? it there. Okay. All right. But there's, uh, yeah, we have a ton of content coming on the uh, YouTube channel. This week on Wednesday, we have the behind the scenes video of Arizona when we were out at the Super Bowl, the sandbagger with Portnoy and Josh Richards, the dozen behind the scenes. It's basically 15 minutes of Wit and Portnoy just screaming at each other at the top okay. of their lungs. It's it's absolutely hilarious. And then we have an escape room video. Me, Merles, and Pasha hit an escape room while we were in Fort Lauderdale. It's fucking hilarious. And then, like I said, we got the Mullet Arena tour video coming. So, And then Carolina Hurricanes, the tailgate. We went around the tailgate, did a little man on the street. So lots of YouTube content is coming. Subscribe. We have 260,000 subscribers right now. Let's get that thing going, and uh, and then we'll keep pumping out some more content. So I know G's going to be happy. Two plugs for the YouTube channel. This is oh big. My God. This is big, Get your boys. hand out of your pants. Uh, Biz, this weekend was the NBA All-Star Weekend out in Salt Lake City. Uh, your buddy Charles Barkley and Shaq just shitting all over uh, Salt Lake City, saying there's nothing to do there. Shaq said he never ate so much room service in his life. And then Barkley was giving shit to uh, Draymond Green, saying the Warriors are done. He's fucking hilarious. But I think the big news of the weekend was Mac McClung. Never heard of the guy. He won the dunk contest. Second white guy ever to win the dunk contest. The first in 27 years after Brent Barry. And I don't know if it's a coincidence because it was in Salt Lake City that a white guy won. But either way, uh, definitely a shock to see after 27 years, Biz. <laughs> oh, it's awesome. And, and this is going to change this kid's life forever. I think before uh, – oh, wait, what's, what's up, buddy? Did you see the post his post oh, win interview? No. Did you see his post win interview? He shouted out his inspiration no. was watching RA shoot hoops. <laughs> <laughs> it was another white guy who I'm I'm not see that I gotta get another white guy who can dunk. <laughs> so it's if it wasn't for RA just showing us that range, I don't know if we have our second white slam dunk champion. That's true. A lot of requests for me in Portnoy to get a one-on-one -on -one after our shoot performances online lately. I don't know if it's ever going to happen, but I'll, I'll get redemption someday. Someday I'll get redemption. But did you watch any of the game, Biz? I don't know if you. It, I didn't watch any of it. I heard it was awful. I, I yeah. want to say one of the all-star coaches said that was the worst basketball yeah. game ever played. Uh, it's it's a joke. It, the, but the fact that this kid brought the entertainment to the duck, dunk contest, where all these celebrities in attendance were were were, were loving it, and like I said, this is, this guy's going to make life changing money because of this. I don't know if it was right after or before he'd signed with the 76ers D League team. So, I, you know, this kid has an opportunity to maybe one day play in the NBA. I don't know how his fundamentals are. I don't know fuck all about basketball. But as far as this league is concerned, a, a big thumbs up for this guy and, and what he's going to do moving forward as a result. Biz, in regards to the money situation, too, his career earnings are $106,000. He won $100,000 just winning the, the dunk contest. So, like you said, that's going to be life-changing money there. S sponsorships, you know, what's to come and... 
man, do do more of these no-namers if they're going to bring the energy to the dunk contest. 100%. There hasn't been this much hype around the contest since Vince Carter and Tracy McGrady were going at it. Yeah, it seems like the NBA uh, fans thumb, are like NHL a, fans. It's just kind of like all set with the all style. What's up, Wit? A thumbs up for the kid. A thumbs down to the NBA. I responded to a Big Cat tweet who mentioned it's disgusting that none of the players would agree to be the last overall pick. So they like changed the draft format and everything. And they did something where they drafted the reserves what? and then the starters. So basically somebody wouldn't be embarrassed enough. Like if you remember, Phil Kessel sat there and took the abuse from Ovechkin and everyone else. And it was very funny. And it's like, who cares? I'm an all-star. I'm one of the best at what I do in the world. And not to mention, like I, I was like, oh, boo-hoo. I make seven. 17 million a year. I'm the last pick in the All Star Game draft for the NBA, and people were quickly to remind me, like it, it's like 35 million. It's like I, I was lowballing what these guys are making, and they still were being too much of babies to possibly be the last pick. It's like, oh my god, can you not take yourself so seriously for one second? That's unbelievable. That's embarrassing. And Phil Kessel, I mean, he ended up being the last pick, but didn't he get a beautiful Chevy out of it? I want to say he might have even gotten a Chevy EV. I think, yeah, I think they car. gave him a car. That was hilarious, too. Like, I, I was looking for uh, a, a Marshawn comment. I think it was Bleacher Report on, on Instagram. They did, like, oh, look how guys have aged over the years. And they had, like, Kessel, like, bef- like early in his career. Then next to him, Marshawn's like, oh, you really went to left field for that one. Like, in other words, like, Kessel hasn't fucking changed at all in the league. I don't know if you – I'll see if I can find it and send it to you. But, wait, we got to go to you, John. Uh, Ram, when's the genesis after a head-to-head battle at home or down the stretch? And the home interviews after, man, really uh, emotional, choked up about it. It's like so, uh, some pretty, pretty uh, not tough stuff to watch. I mean, I think just humanized them a bit. Yeah, Max Home is a crazy story. Um, well, first, John Rahm, it, it's one of the most dominant stretches of golf of all time, like Tiger included. Of his last nine worldwide starts, he's won five of them. And I believe in the other four, he's finishing like second, third, fourth place. It's like there's nobody better in the world right now than him. He retook number one spot. The official world golf rankings bullshit. It's like ridiculous how they do it. He is by far and away, and even before this week, the number one player in the world. So just amazing play by him. But Holm is an awesome story. Um, if you're not a go- If you're a golf fan, you're well of, well aware of who he is and if you're not a golf fan it's an interesting interesting story he was a world beater amateur uh, I think he won the NCAAs just an unbelievable kind of um, come up in the game of golf to where then he turned pro and, and just kind of lost his game and I'd love to have him on sometime he goes on every podcast I'm sure we can get him on um, I've chatted with him like on Instagram or Twitter before seems like a great guy but lost his game completely ended up at like Q school for the Corn Ferry Tour maybe the P- PGA Tour had to birdie, I think, four of the last five holes to even get status the next year. And he really kind of became famous in the golfing world on Twitter because he's very funny. He's able to chirp people's swing in a great way where he has a different comeback for every single swing people send him. And then all of a sudden, throughout him um, being on social media and and, and just grinding, I read an article where he's like, I'm just going to be the hardest working person in golf. Like, I'm not going to worry about the results. I'm just going to worry about, you know, the the route on how I, I believe I can get there. Dude, he's turned into I think he's eighth in the world right now, and he's like competing and 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 hasn't the, has the chance to win big time events. I mean, he won the Genesis two years ago. I think he got emotional talking about how hard he fought out there. He didn't have his swing on the back nine. He hits a nice fade, a left to right tee ball, and everything was going left. So he hung in there, still gave him a hell of a run down the back nine. But what he was mentioning was when he won it, and he's an LA kid. When he won it two years ago, there was no fans. So I think all the fans that were rooting him on and, and all these people that he knows uh, being from L.A. and playing in L.A. at Riviera, I think it meant a lot to him looking back on how hard he fought when he didn't have his A game and, and knowing that all these people were there to root for him and support him. So uh, if you're going to win with class, you got to lose with class. And I don't think there's anything classier than the way he went about the loss and explaining how it all went down. Um, on the same side of golf, The Full Swing was released, which is the documentary on Netflix. It's similar to what Netflix did with F1. um, And that's just been a a, a huge success. I think it's it's, it's helped and grow the viewership and have F1 become so much bigger in the United States. It was always such a global sport that now, I think because of that documentary, more U.S. people are tuning in. I've watched uh, half of them. or I think there's eight. So I've watched four of them. It's okay. Um, I was expecting a little bit more. These golfers, man, they're weird cats, dude. It's like the one episode, Justin oh. Thomas, uh, they, 
Sorry? No, I mean, you said they're weird cats, and I went, yo, you think? I've seen a couple clips. That <laughs> fucking Kepka looks like a douchebag. Yeah, he just, he can't get out of his own way a little bit, just like the ultimate hardo, but even with him, they're at his house, and he, he won four majors, um, top of the game of golf for, for, for a three-year stretch, and all of a sudden, he's sitting around, and he's like, and anyone who plays golf will know, he's like, I, I lost my swing, I lost my game. Like it, It's like, I sit around when I'm playing bad, and I'm like, I, I, I'm so bad at golf right now. The game is crazy. Like One day, you'll play amazing, and nothing will change, and the next day, everything feels different, and when you see these high-level, world-class players going through the same thing that 10 handicaps go through, it's just such a crazy game, but one of the episodes, Justin Thomas, they happen to be following him at the PGA Championship that he won last year so it was pretty lucky of Netflix to be following the guy who ends up winning and team sports are so incredible because you build this brotherhood and this camaraderie and you see individual sports and yeah when they win they get all the accolades and when they lose it's just them to take the beating and put the beating on themselves but Thomas wins and it's this crazy rush of media and celebrating with his family and emotional it was his second major and he's walking out to the parking lot and he's like that's it he's like I I wish it went slower. Like all of a sudden he's getting in the car and it's over. And for sure he celebrates with friends back home, but it just made me appreciate, you know, playing a team sport my whole life because, you know, I don't know, but you win the Stanley cup. It's the boys, you know, it's just the boys. And it's just you and the guys talking about what each guy meant to the team and what you went through and each battle, each player had throughout the season with the media, with the coach, with themselves. And to play an individual sport, it's like you almost have to be a little sociopathic in terms of like, you shut down everything and everyone and you focus on yourself. So it's hard to kind of be a normal human when everything relies on you and what you do. So uh, the docu- the documentary so far, the best episode was the one on Joel Damon, who's kind of a career, he's had a crazy you know life. His mom passed away at a young age from cancer, so he's a big advocate for cancer. He then got testicular <laughs> cancer later on and he's come up to, he's the 70th ranked player in the world, but he talks about these top 10 players, these John Roms, Justin Thomas guys, and then him. And he's like, I'm not even close to these guys. I can't win a major. But if somebody's got to be the 70th best golfer in the world, it might as well be me. So, I mean, if you like golf, I think you'll enjoy it. Um, I think people who are really into golf, maybe we're expecting a little bit more. And maybe people who aren't golf fans will really enjoy it and, and pick up the game of golf. But uh, it, golf's in a good spot. I, I, I think the PJ Tour is exciting. I think live golf, blah. I'm not, I, I'm not really into that. I don't blame the guys who took the money, but I also think there's probably some regret within those guys. Wow, fucking nice synopsis there, Wade. Also, we should mention our new co-worker, Dan Rappaport, is featured in that uh, documentary series as well. Uh, he, he works with the Four Play Boys. Nice to see him up there. Um, yeah, dude, my old lady doesn't like golf at all. She pissed through the whole thing over the weekend, so she enjoyed it. But check it out. Boys, this has been an awesome show. Snap it around. Any final thoughts, whatever, before we... End it. Well, you mentioned uh, co-worker, and we haven't been able to get to it this podcast because it's ran super long, but uh, the kid who showed up from Long Island in Fort Lauderdale, the, the, this is not over. Uh, Grinelli has gotten a few emails if you want to hop in and talk about these. Is it okay to talk about his mother has reached out via yeah. email to basically let us know this kid needs to get out of my house. He needs a job. Is that, is that where we're at at this point? Yes, uh, his mom uh, seems like a very nice lady. sent sent me a few emails this weekend, and she she did assure us that he will not slit our throats. So I think that's the well, that's main good. point she was How trying to get she? out there: is he will not slit our throats. He's a hard worker, and uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Well, I'll say <laughs> I, I've story. heard right, from we'll a lot of people. I would say the overwhelming uh, feedback I've got is you're absolutely crazy if you hire this guy. Um, I got a bunch of texts. I had, I did have, a, I did have support for him. I did have support. This text cracked me up, though. It said, "You do not hire the GM of the bar. Never, ever, ever. Complete psychopath. I've had to fire people like him. Steer clear." Probably pretty valid points. What I go back to saying is, he did such a goddamn good job. My buddies, Unreal I was job. telling them the story when they were down here. They mentioned. Um, there was no chance he wasn't doing this in a prior a prior in life too. Like when he says he was working for the Islanders, he 100% was going to Islanders events and saying he worked for the Islanders to the people at the event and then telling the Islanders that he worked he for was the event assistant. was being held. He was Lou's assistant. He was Lou's assistant. That's what he put on his uh, resume. <laughs> could you? I don't know, boys. Imagine? I don't know. He fucking Lou's did around. He's like, who the Jesus. fuck is this guy? Yeah, uh, who, who is this person next to me? 
Actually, I, I got one last note. I, I had a, a fundraiser yesterday here in Charlestown. Uh, a longtime buddy of mine. I've known him for like 45 years. Jimmy Hingston, um, he's going through a cancer battle right now, and they had a fundraiser for him. And just wanted to give him a shout-out, Hinky. I, I love you, buddy, and I, I hope you get through this. There was hundreds of people turned out on a, sa- a Saturday, uh, sorry, Sunday afternoon to show up. To, uh, you know, they had uh, raffles and silent auctions and all that stuff. Literally never saw that many people on the nights at Columbus in my life. It was uh, a great day. Uh, a lot of people from the town, you know, wh- like you were talking about people supporting and friends and it just makes you proud to be like from a town like this and then people from out of town come over to support them so again jim uh if you're listening buddy we love you and uh we're pulling for you and uh we'll, we'll get you through this thing buddy take care all right is there a link for people to donate anywhere or do you want to tweet out a link and then we can uh retweet it from the chicklets account so so oh. that people know where to donate absolutely I'll, I'll dig it up and i'll get that to you good good thought Perfect. mike so thanks for letting me say that and boys. i'll, and, uh, I'll, any, I'll end this by saying once again like Thank you so much to my, to my family, my friends, my wife. A very special uh, couple days for myself. I, 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 I don't deserve it, but I, I just had such a great time. And I think for anyone out there listening, it, as you get older and when you have kids, you get married, or even, even when you just move along in life, like f- friendship's so important, but it's also kind of hard work. So at times you have great friends. And when you see them, yeah, it's like no time's passed and you're right back to being good buddies but my only advice would be do your best and staying in touch I, I got people that are lifelong friends that are so good at, at staying in touch because it is work and um but there's nothing more meaningful than than a great friendship so i'm sure all you listeners have people that mean a lot to you out there and and all of you listeners mean so much to us so once again another week down this is such an exciting part of the year for us we'll be going more episodes when the playoffs start so it's 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 a great time to be a chicklets fan i hope and think and it's so fun to work on this show with you boys and i wish you'd been down here as well so you were carrying the load in carolina i can't thank you enough for that and um i hope everyone has a great week oh my last thing so i'm playing in the gasparilla it's an amazing mid-am tournament i wouldn't be in without the help of some members who helped me get into this tournament i become friends with people down there so i get invited back my goal is to make the cut i've played in two of them the first uh, time i played wasn't close to it the second time i played i doubled two of the final three holes to miss the cup by one so this is the year for the wit dog maybe if uh, if enough people reach out to grinelli or myself and want a round recap i know sometimes people like that a lot of people hate it i could do it on my twitter um after each round if you want it uh but they got scoreboards out there with your pictures they got fans out there it's a pretty special event so i can't wait to get down there and and give it give it my all starting thursday so well i was gonna say my only advice would be don't be handing anybody any tampons if you're out driving them you don't we we don't we don't need you getting canceled hey that fucking story are people really mad about that (laughs) because let me tell you something annika (laughs) sorenstam annika sorenstam uh out drove a guy in a tournament one time and like handed him a skirt or something like that. So what the fuck? Where's the rage on that? I mean, what's what's the difference? Tiger slightly made a funny joke. Women hit the ball shorter than men. Okay, that's facts. That's science. I'm sorry to break it to you. So when a f- close to 50 year old Tiger Woods is pounding it by one of the longest hitters in the game and makes a joke with the Tampax and you actually get offended, go fuck yourself. <laughs> You know, big deal. It's just a beach whistle. Who gives a fuck? Hey. All right, boys. What a pod, boys. That was a blast. Love, Love you, guys. you guys. Wit, Ditto. happy 40th, buddy. You deserve it. R.A., you're a machine. And G, <laughs> two plugs for the YouTube channel. You're on top of the world, baby. Love it, baby.